Okay, good evening. This is the final stream of 2023. Or I guess this is the final This Week in Tech for 2023. So it's kind of be closing out the year with graphics card news. So GPU rumors, news. Uh, actually, not really rumors at this point. We've been talking about this a couple times. And I'm going to be talking about the games of 2023. Kind of my my favorites, I guess, or my my best games, or what I consider the best games of 2023 if, in terms of the ones that I actually played. And then at the very end, if we still have time, we may talk about the return of crypto because I do think crypto is starting to come back, unfortunately, for those that are into computer hardware because that could have a negative impact on the GPU market next year. So we'll cover that probably toward the end of the stream. Hey, RK, good evening. So this is the weekly show for those tuning in for the first time here. This is This Week in Tech. It happens every Thursday evening, North America time, where we talk about all things PC DIY related, whether it be graphics cards, CPUs, motherboards, power supplies, RAM, etc., cases, and anytime a viewer has a question, feel free to ask your question. And assuming that I'm paying attention, or if not me, then somebody in the chat will answer the question. So we'll do our best. So we have a growing community here of PC enthusiasts, and that's kind of uh, how it's been for about a year now. So with that being said, with the intro out of the way... Let's get into the first news topic here, which I just noticed today is an article about the supposedly the Radeon RX 7600 XT is rumored to launch on January 24th. Only custom variants planned coming late January. Finally, new Radeon GPU. So this is something that has been in existence for a while. Uh, it looks like leaked information suggests that the 7600 XT may come in two variants featuring either 10 or 12 gigabytes of memory. The specific model AMD will choose or if both versions are planned remains uncertain. So it looks like if we look at the RDNA 3 lineup here, this card is supposed to be Navi 32 based. So it is actually a cut down variant of what looks to be the uh, 7800 XT, if I'm not mistaken, right? Because this is Navi 32. Since Navi 31 is the big RDNA 3 GPUs. 32 is kind of the middle, and 33 is the small. So it's kind of weird that it's rumored to be a 32 line when we already have two GPUs that are Navi 32 based. It's almost like this one should actually be the Navi 33 XT. So it's... I don't really understand how, why they're doing it this way, but I guess they have a lot more capacity of Navi 32 base dies. That's the only way this makes sense. So they're using an even further cut down variant of what would be a 7800 or 7700 XT and they're going to call that the 7600 XT if these rumors are true. So you can see the last time AMD launched a GPU it was September of this year and then prior to that the it was December of last year so it's it has been a large gap in terms of when they launched their RDNA 3 based GPUs. And the reason why that is, is because they have a lot of 6000 series stock that they have to get rid of. And that's the reason why they're so slow to launch these. Similar to NVIDIA, only not as bad, although NVIDIA still has a lot of mid-range RTX 30 series to sell through. Uh, although it is slowly drying up, or I guess it's starting to dry up now. 
So that's kind of that one. Uh, so I don't know how popular that GPU is going to be. I mean, it could be useful, particularly if it has 12 gigabytes of VRAM. I think that might be a relatively good mining card, although I don't really know what what is going to be the primary coins that the mining crowd goes after. Right now, in the crypto world, and we'll talk about this a little bit later, the primary cryptocurrencies are obviously Bitcoin, then there's Ethereum, and then there's now the up-and-coming Solana, which is also proof-of-stake, just like Ethereum. So I, what I have observed with the mining, uh, people that still do GPU mining, they mine a bunch of altcoins that look promising and try to go for these minor jumps in popularity because that causes the hash rate to go up for them. But then at the end of the day, I think their goal is to transfer the coin into a different crypto. So like, for example, uh, uh, they would transfer whatever XYZ coin they're mining into Ethereum or into Solana or just into plain old Bitcoin. And I think that's kind of the strategy. I think the challenge with that is these altcoins that they're mining, they need to be on the exchange that they're using to get to, to basically migrate them over to these other coins. So that's something that might become a large or a much, much uh, a bigger thing to talk about next year because crypto is on its way back. Uh, which is unfortunate for those that like graphics cards because it means that the mid-range GPUs are going to become harder to get and that could drive the price up through the mid-range. That also means that people who are willing to overpay and buy higher-end GPUs will probably just buy the higher-end GPU, but then that will also drive the price of the higher GPUs like the 7900 XT, the 4070 Ti, the 4080, those GPUs will go up in price as this sort of stuff starts taking off. And it, it is rumored to happen sometime in the second half of next year because if you guys have been following my channel, we have talked about crypto. Every now and then we talk about how the GPU landscape changes primarily because of crypto, whether you're in a bear market for crypto, and right now we're in a bear market and it's going to come out of a bear market next year and go into a bull market. And when we're in a bull market, GPU prices are extremely expensive. So that's just something to keep in mind. Actually, I just realized something. What is my... Oh, we're just streaming with this thumbnail. I probably should have put a different thumbnail, but it's fine. BDP Racing, are any of those new GPUs worth upgrading to from a 12 gigabyte 3060? Um... It kind of depends. So, like, for example, you, you you have 3060. It doesn't matter if it's a 12 gigabyte or not. It's the same GPU. So, the, if you go to a... A 70... So, a 7600 XT is probably going to be, like, a 6700 XT... So it'd be about 30% faster. So in all honesty, probably not. I, th I really think the only GPU that where it starts to become significantly better uh, or noticeably better from a 3060 would be something like this. Like a 7700 XT, for example. I think this sort of GPU is where it'll be noticeably faster than what you have now. Um, yeah, the other story that I wanted to cover real briefly here is the rumor, where is it? Oh, okay, it's not, it's not a rumor. So, NVIDIA launches GeForce RTX 4090D with 14,592 CUDA cores, 24 gigabytes of memory, and 425 watt TDP. So this is really strange. The name is the the 4090D. It's a cut down variant. 
I believe, because if we look at the actual 4090, the actual 4090 is 16,384. So this one is definitely cut down. But it is a, an official product because it you can see the branding there for MSI's card and it has the D there, so it's it's the D variant. <laughs> okay. So it's still a lot more CUDA cores than a 4080, so it's still gonna be significantly faster than a 4080. And it still has the 384-bit bus. So all it looks like all they have done is deactivated some CUDA cores. Hey Soul. Hey Jay. How do you fellow nerds? <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty much what this live stream is. It's it's just nerds talking about technology for like two or three hours. Does the D stand for defective? <laughs> you know, I don't know what that stands for because it's it's I was thinking that internally there's probably like an A B C. Like a, there's a the the first one was like an A variant, then the second one was a B, then a C variant, like revision C is probably the current one. Then they, they made this, like, revision D, which they probably didn't intend to do, but they had to do it for legal re or I guess legal reasons. It's more, well, it's legal trade, whatever, geopolitical reasons. I guess that's the, that's the only way to say it. You know, it's, uh, it's for the Chinese market, so I don't expect these to even be talked about outside of China. Uh, you know, unless somebody like Horror on Box imports one somehow into Australia... I don't expect anybody to do content on this card. It, it just, it exists. So it's weird because anything that's lower and lower than a 4090 is getting super variants, except I think the 4060 is not getting a super variant. But then like all the mid-range stuff, like 4080, 4070, 4070 tie, and 40, yeah, 4060 tie... I don't think 4060 tie. I think it's... I, I don't know. The super stuff is dumb. I really wish they wouldn't do it. I guess they're, they're only doing it because they have a bunch of leftover defective GPUs or something like that. And they're just replacing their lineup. I don't really know what they're doing. Uh, super has always been kind of dumb. Uh, but they're doing super for all the lower end stuff. And then for the 4090, they're doing like the D. It's like the D naming for China. It's like... Okay. Cool story. So, that's that. Uh, let's see. So, other than the, the 7600 XT, the 7600 XT and the Super cards are technically new. I mean, I guess. But I don't think anyone's going to be overjoyed to be able to buy any of these cards. If I'm being honest, like I think, I think if somebody wanted a 40 series GPU or if somebody wanted a 7000 series RDNA 3 GPU, they probably would have bought one during the holiday season. And if they're not buying one now and they're just waiting for Super, they're kind of wasting their time because I don't really know. Like, what I think is going to happen is these super cards going to take the price they're going to take they're going to launch with the exact same price of the existing cards so nothing changes and then the old the existing cards the ones that are available now those will become end of life early next year and they'll just take months to sell through the channel like they have been doing throughout this year so it's just kind of a it's kind of a boring market right now to talk about GPUs. I mean there's some interesting things especially around like the Chinese market because of all the crazy stuff that caused like the 4090 price to skyrocket. Uh but other than that there's like really nothing cool to talk about with GPUs. So that that's why it's cool to talk about crypto because like crypto coming back like new Coins that are proof of work based will get way more people interested in mining again, I guess. 
And that could create a lot of drama and hype for GPUs. And it could cause the price of GPUs to go up across the board, just like 2021. So that would be really cool to see that happen. I mean, okay, it wouldn't be cool if you're trying to buy a GPU. That would be pretty bad. That would be terrible. Uh, anyone who lived through the pandemic and the 2021 GPU, you know, that having to learn how to use Newegg Shuffle and bots and all kinds of stupid things to buy graphics cards, like going to that extreme or line up outside of Best Buy, like, or, you know, it's, it's ridiculous. Like, if, if it goes back to that again next year, then I'll, I'm just glad that I already have the GPUs that I have. So it's like, I don't need to worry. But, I mean, a lot of other people might not even know about this happening next year, and they're just going to be unprepared, and it's just going to be kind of sad for them. Gigabyte is pushing their... 3050 thing hard in there yeah but who cares about that type of gpu right like that's not the sort of gpu that anybody gets enthusiastic about like no one's excited about a 3050 six gigabyte that's called waste of marketing dollars on gigabytes part gigabytes made some pretty stupid moves this year to be honest like they they don't have hardware quality issues it's more like they have they have issues with, like, their test team internally is just not very good, as far as I'm concerned, compared to other companies that, re like, add in board partners. There are a lot better ones than Gigabyte. Let me tell you. <laughs> um, and I'm speaking from experience because I have a bunch of Gigabyte motherboards. Um, but anyway... So Gigabyte leak confirms RTX 4080, 4070 Ti, 4070 Super Series, 3050, 6 gigabyte. I mean, who, why are they even mentioning the 3050? So 3050, 6 gigabyte, 3050, 6 gigabyte means that there is going to be no 4050. Like, NVIDIA's like skipping it or whatever. Like, it's kind of like the Maxwell and the GT 1030 Pascal. They're just kind of like keeping those things around for whatever reason. So they're going to keep the 3050 around as kind of the replacements of these really, really low-end GPUs. And they're not even bothering to make like a successor to the 3050. So I, I guess that's what that means. I mean, when I read that sort of headline, I mean, that's what that means. So that basically means NVIDIA's lineup is 4090, 4080, 4070, 4060, 3050. It's like all of a sudden, the very last one at the bottom of the list has a three at the beginning of it, the name. There's no four. So that, that's what that means. Uh, Asus to launch ROG, okay, whatever, G14 gaming laptop with flagship Ryzen 9, 8945 HS Hawkpoint CPU. That's, uh, that's new. Uh, but see, these are the sort of things, the, the laptop news... We always get bombarded with this sort of stuff, like, in CES. So that's why, uh, I mean, a laptop, okay. I mean, I don't I don't buy gaming laptops, so it's like, whatever. Uh, MSI to launch AMD B650 motherboard with ATX 12 VO standard. So that's kind of interesting, because I don't know why Video Card Z keeps on doing, like, this sort of thing. Like, are they is, are these guys constantly getting like DDoS or something? Like what's up with uh video cards website? Anyway, um B650 12 VO Wi-Fi. Yeah, so basically what this is for those that don't know, this is a new ATX standard that never really saw any adoption. It had been worked on the standard had been worked completed like a while back. I want to say it was like three years ago. And nobody cared, so now it looks like MSI is actually making a product that uses ATX 12VO. And the reason why nobody cares is because if you want to use this new standard, you have to buy a new power supply. So if you have like a really good high-end power supply, like a 1200 watt or 1500 watt or something, then yeah, I don't know how you use this motherboard. Unless there's some kind of adapter, which I highly doubt. 
because this is very different in terms of the pinout. They even have these really strange looking SATA power connectors which I've never actually seen before. So I don't know how that works. This looks cool. This is interesting. I mean, I'm, I'm kind of downplaying this article where the reality is ATX has not gotten any standard update in a long time. So this could be huge. But this is the sort of thing that by the time, if this actually takes off and becomes mainstream, by the time motherboards are all 12 VO based instead of like the standard 24 pin and the EPS 12 volts, then, uh, you know, it'll be like 10 years from now. So, so I don't expect this to actually mean anything in the immediate future. So, yeah, that's... That's whatever. Okay, let's look at WCCF Tech. Let's see, because there's better articles here. So this, again, 4090D, launched in China, reduced cores, similar gaming performance for 15... Or, okay, like, what is this? This is the same price as the 4090. Like, that... Do you know what I call this? Similar gaming performance for 1599. You know what I call this? Rip-off. I call this rip-off. That's straight up rip off. They're ripping off people in China with the 4090D. They're selling it for the exact same MSRP of the actual 4090. That is a rip off. Okay. I don't know how much more we need to say about this. All right. More 4090 stuff. Let's see. Um. Yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, there's a new Samsung phone. CPU mining is starting to take off again, for those that don't know, or those that... Which is a good thing, because if CPU mining takes off, it means that it'll delay GPU mining from taking off big time. I think this GPU will also get banned by the U.S. government. I thought... They were easing the restrictions. I thought they weren't making it worse. Like, I thought they were making it easier instead of worse. Like, the last I heard was they went, su like, super strong arm on NVIDIA and said, like, you can try to rename stuff. We're just going to ban it. And then they kind of backtracked and was like, oh, no, actually... We'll let some of these go. So I thought there was something like that. But I don't really remember the full details anymore. Because that story... The whole like NVIDIA selling st their big GPUs in China. And the AI accelerator stuff. like that, that whole thing keeps changing every couple of days. That I don't even know what the truth is anymore. So... Yeah, I don't know. What is this? Michael Saylor's micro strategy keeps Bitcoin buoyant as the SEC keeps springing hurdles in approving a spot ETF. Oh, yeah. So this is another thing, too. Like, this is the thing that is causing crypto to potentially make its dreaded return next year with an ETF coming out that includes Bitcoin. That is further legitimizing Bitcoin. And that means that... Uh, well, that means that crypto is coming back. I mean, that, that's the easiest thing I can... That's the easiest way I can explain it without going way, way in-depth on technical reasons as to why crypto is coming back. So, but right now, like, what's happening is Bitcoin is, is going to start growing back to the way it was like two years ago, three years ago. Ethereum is kind of just there, but it will also go up because as Bitcoin goes up, all the other coins go up. If you guys notice that, like as, as Bitcoin goes up, all the other coins go up. As Bitcoin goes down, all the other coins go down. So it's like whatever Bitcoin does, all the other cryptocurrencies do the same thing. Uh, they just kind of mimic it. So it's kind of the gold standard at this point. And the other one that's up and coming is Solana. But Solana is proof of stake, just like Ethereum. So if Solana goes really, really big next year, because it has been going up like quite rapidly in the last couple of weeks, 
if Solana takes off, and it's the only one that takes off, then I don't think we need to worry too much about crypto becoming a problem for GPUs, for those that are trying to purchase GPUs. Now, if somebody somewhere invents some coin and, you know, it's just like, uh, what's the guy who invented Ethereum? Vitalik, whatever his name is, the guy from, he he's like from Canada, but he's got like Russian heritage or something. Like the guy who invented Ethereum, if there's some, if another dude or girl, doesn't really matter, if somebody somewhere invents some new crypto, some state-of-the-art crypto thing that is way faster, way more efficient, uh, way more secure, whatever the things are, they can market it, and they can get enough buy-in, get enough hype, and make it proof of work. As soon as they make it proof of work, you know what that means? $900 4070s, here we come. Twelve hundred dollar forty seventy TIs, you you know it's gonna happen. Sixteen hundred dollar forty eighties, you know it. Three thousand dollar forty nineties, for sure, one hundred percent, it will happen. So that's where we're going if crypto rears its ugly head in the proof of work variant uh, next year, because it always comes and goes. There's ebbs and flows. There's Peaks and troughs, it follows the business cycle. Anybody who studied economics knows that what I'm saying is the gospel and it's 100% going to happen. Like It's not like it's not going to happen. Uh, somebody somewhere is going to want to make a name for themselves. They're going to invent some new coin. But even if they don't invent a coin, crypto is about to come out of the bear market in the first part of next year. And if demand for altcoins goes up because there's some kind of Ponzi scheme to like just mine some altcoins and turn them all into Solana on the exchanges, whether we're talking Coinbase, Kraken, whatever, like they just start shifting them around, you know, like if someone can buy like, you know, 16, 40, 60 TIs, so that's like two mining rigs because it's eight GPUs per mining rig roughly, and they just mine you know whatever the latest crypto is that's proof of work and they make like ten dollars a day but they do it for like 90 days and they get their money back they, they basically keep selling the crypto or not selling converting that crypto that they're mining into solana or into some high gain uh crypto that's proof of stake then i'm sorry those that want gpus in 2024 I'm sorry about your 4070, but you're not going to be able to buy one. Or at least not for like less than $900. So, you know, that that's it's the reality. We've seen it. It was 2021. I lived through it. Everybody watching this stream lived through that time. We know how it was in 2021 and the first part of 2022. And the very end of 2020, it was pretty bad. And if you go further back, if you go further back, like think about 2017. Anybody who was trying to buy like a Vega 64 or a 1070 or a 1070 Ti uh, or even like a 1060 or a RX 570 or an RX 580, you know, you guys know all too well that those cards were impossible to find. And they were way overpriced if you could actually find one. And the scalpers were all over that stuff. It's the same old, same old. It happens every now and then. And next year is the year that it's going to start happening again. If they wanted a GPU, they should have bought a GPU. Yeah, they should have bought a GPU this year. Should have bought a GPU this holiday season, actually. Because there were actually some pretty good deals. Especially on Newegg. Those 4060s will probably be the first to go with their low power draw. Uh, yeah, well, I I honestly think the 4060 Ti. Because you guys remember, remember how all the reviewers bashed the 4060 Ti? Gamers Nexus said 4060 Ti is trash, or it's like bad value, 8 gigabyte, $400 fiasco, you know, this is a scam. 
4060 Ti is a scam. No matter what you guys saw, like, every reviewer basically had bad things to say about 4060 Ti. Well, the good news for the crypto people is... If those reviews scare away the gamer crowd from the 4060 Ti, then the crypto guys are going to gobble them all up. Because <laughs> I honestly think the 4060 Ti is probably going to be one of the better mining cards. Although I could be wrong, though, because isn't that the one that's really gimped? Like, one of them is, like, super gimped on the memory bus. Or, like, all of them are. All the NVIDIA cards are, like, super gimped. Like this card. Yeah, 4060 Ti... Has a 128-bit bus. Okay, never mind. This one might be trash for mining, though. Like, it's it's it kind of depends. It really kind of depends because it doesn't have a wide bus. But mining the the memory bus and the... I think it's like the core, core to TMU or something. I forgot about the ratio. There's something about mining. Like, you don't, you don't think of it from, like, a gaming... You don't think of it in terms of, like geometry capability you think of it in terms of compute capability so if we look at the compute on this thing this thing has 22 t flops how much does a 3070 have 3070 has a 256 bit bus and same amount of ram and it has 20 okay so 20.33 t flops so it's about the same 4060 Ti is about the same as a 3070 when it comes to compute performance. It's actually a little bit better. So that means that it might be the one to get if you're doing crypto. 4060. 4060 has 15 TFLOPs. See, this one's going to be lacking in a lot of things. So I kind of think the 4060 Ti is going to be the one that crypto people are going to go after. Shading units, TMUs, and raw. Yeah, but uh, I think compute is what matters for uh, crypto. The Intel Arc A770 will be better than the 4062. Is that true, though? Is that true? Because, see, the problem with for the Intel GPU is you have to actually... So, the thing about mining is not only does it... Not only do the metrics matter... The actual mining algorithms matter. Uh, largely, they they actually matter more. So, Intel could have really good specs on paper, but if the mining node is not like it doesn't know what to do with that GPU, because nobody developed the like the mine like the front end part for it to connect to the node to basically do the mining work then it might not be better than the 4060. That's what I'm thinking. Because a lot of work went into making NVIDIA GPUs better at mining. Because years ago, AMD cards were the ones that everybody mined on. Like, no one you, no one mined on GeForce in, the like, the first two generations of crypto. It was around the... It was basically the last time it was really big, and it was the time before. So, like, the... I guess here let's let's look at the timeline. Here we go. We're going into paint. So let's talk about crypto waves because I want everybody watching to be aware well aware of this so that you guys know when this is going to happen. So we had the first wave was the 2014 wave. During this time it was BTC and LTC, Bitcoin and Litecoin were the two most popular coins to mine. And the cards that you used were the 7950. Technically, you could use 7970 uh, XT, 7950. Uh, wait, there was no 7970 XT. It was not called that. What am I talking about? It was 7970 gigahertz edition. It was the, the Radeon HD. Radeon HD 7970, 7950, the R9 290X was the most powerful one, but you didn't really see people mining on those because those were like really expensive. So it was like R9 290, R9 280X, which was basically a rebranded 7970. Uh, there were also people still mining on the old 58, 
5870, I believe. Uh, 6870. Uh, 50. No, or, you know, like, there were, there were the older AMD cards. Basically, the point is, back in 2014, all the people that did mining, it was all Radeon. Like, no one was mining on GeForce in 2014. If you were mining on GeForce in 2014, you were basically losing money. Uh, you were just wasting your money buying NVIDIA GPUs because none of the algorithms were optimized for GeForce the way they are now. And GeForce just didn't have the compute. Like, AMD had way more compute on their GPUs because GCN was a... It, it was like... The Radeon group back then did not have enough money to develop multiple different architectures. So they basically made kind of an all-in-one sort of architecture that could do geometry and do compute. And it was relatively good at geometry, but not as good as NVIDIA was. That's the reason why NVIDIA was so much better with tessellation back then. But it was way better than NVIDIA when it came to compute. So, but And that's the reason why it was so good at mining compared to GeForce. So that's how it was back then. Then there was the second wave of crypto, which would have been 2017. There was the 2017 wave. It was kind of like 20... Yeah, it was pretty much 2017. And during this time, it was all about Ethereum. The rise of Ethereum. I guess BTC was obviously still around. But there was ASIC mining for BTC at that point. So it was really all about Ethereum. And then there was the fork and then there was other stuff like ETC. But I think that never really did anything. But what people mined on in this generation of crypto was primarily RX 480, RX 470, RX 580, RX 570. Those were the most popular ones. Then there was Vega 64, Vega 56. And then, of course, you had the older GPUs that you could still mine on. Like you, I, Technically, there was the R9 Fury, but most people didn't really mine on an R9 Fury because it was like so low in production like there was not a lot of volume of those cards ever produced but those were really really good at mining because they had hbm the problem with the fury cards was they were only eight they were only four gigabyte so i think it was during like sometime it was either 2017 or somewhere i forget which when it happened but the dag file for ethereum crossed the four gigabyte mark or something like that and then you couldn't mine efficiently on cards that had less than four or had four gigabytes or less vram and that's the reason why the fury was not really used very you know like as a mining card long term so you, you also had cards like the r9 390 the r9 380x i think where is another one Basically, these Tonga stuff, or the rebrand of the Hawaii GPU, this is what people were mining on. And now, at this point in time, you could mine on GeForce, the GTX 1070, and the GTX 1060 were used for mining. Uh, in particular, the 1070 was the best NVIDIA card at the time for mining, because apparently... Uh, GDDR5 memory was superior to mine with than GDDR5X. So for that reason, mining uh, miners pretty much avoided the GTX 1080 and 1080 Ti because those cards were actually less efficient at mining. Like the hash rate per watt, per dollar, etc., no matter what metric you look at, the 1070 was the best GeForce card in all those metrics. And it was primarily because it was a it, it came with GDDR5 and it was 8 gigabytes. So that was the reason why that one was popular. But most of the mining GPUs at the time were all AMD based. Then we come to the next crypto wave, which was the last crypto wave that we had to live through. Which was the crypto wave of 2021. 
So this one was like BTC obviously is the main crypto, but again, like just like with last time, it was not the one that most people were mining with. It was definitely all about Ethereum. Like the focus was all on Ethereum. So it was pretty much a rerun of the 2017 one. However, this one was unique in that for the first time in the history of crypto mining, GeForce became the preferred brand to mine on. So you had people mining on uh, 3070. That was like the best one. 3060 Ti was very popular. Uh, I mean, 3070 Ti, you could, but it was you were starting to like... Once you go up to 3070 Ti, you start hurting your ROI. Like the amount of time it takes you to make back the money you spent on the GPU becomes significantly longer. So anything that was greater than that, I mean, you could mine on 3080, 3090. Very few people did. These cards were extremely expensive and they were very hard to get. So you could mine on those. Like the from AMD's side, CC900 XT was really good. CC800 XT was good, but the best one from AMD, well, you know what, I'm just going to put them in order, like, in terms of, like, best value. The AMD 6800 was really good, and that's the reason why nobody who wanted to buy one for gaming could actually find one. Like, they were near impossible to buy through normal methods. Uh, back then but these are pretty much what people were using i mean obviously you could also mine on the 6700 xt the cc 700 was also okay because they had like 10 and 12 gigabytes so um, those were pretty good too but you can see the tables kind of flipped like nvidia became the preferred brand for mining crypto whereas in the past it was always radeon and this is the reason why, this is the reason why the last time we had a crypto wave, everybody globally felt, felt how bad it was. Because in the past, in the past, you had mining on Radeon, gaming on GeForce. Let's think about this. In 2014, you had mining on Radeon and gaming on GeForce. Yes, you did have people gaming on Radeon, and, but you didn't really have anybody mining on GeForce in 2014. So you had people mining on Radeon and gaming on Radeon, and then you had people gaming on GeForce. And when you think about NVIDIA's market share in the gaming market, Versus AMD's GPU market share in the gaming market. NVIDIA has always had the majority share. So you had a balancing act. You had gamers buying GeForce mostly. I mean, obviously you have some buying Radeon. But it wasn't enough to create a dilemma. Because there was enough supply of Radeon, or I guess enough supply of GeForce... And no one was buying them for mining, so the gaming crowd was not really impacted. Unless it was someone who wanted to buy a Radeon GPU for gaming. Then they would have been well aware of the lack of the ability to buy Radeon cards because of all the mining people. Fast forward to 2017, you still have mining, Radeon, gaming... GeForce, you had this same thing. Now here, here, some people start mining on GeForce just like how there's people that are gaming on Radeon. So it was more noticeable to the general public, or I guess the PC gaming crowd, in 2017 compared to how it was in 2014. Now, fast forward to the last wave. What happened in the last wave? Because I'll give you a hint. It changed. In 2021, the demographics... One of the demographics changed. The other one stayed the same. 
You'll buy Intel RK770 for gaming performance, not for auto. What? The A770... The A770 has a hard time keeping up with the 1650 when it comes to generative design. Yeah, but guys, that has nothing to do with what we're talking about. We're talking about mining, though. Summer of this year was the best time to buy... They completely wiped out the what? They completely wiped out the CAD GPUs during 2021 to the point where I had to get a gaming GPU. The Quadro cards got wiped out. Oh yeah, well yeah yeah yeah. So no, what happened in 2021 was mining was primarily GeForce, and gaming was still GeForce. So now, so what happened in 2021? Why did we run into a scenario where it was extremely hard to buy a graphics card in 2021? Because you had a group that had traditionally been buying Radeon and siphoning off the supply of Radeon chips, now switching sides and buying Team Green. So now, and, and the thing is, the people that were doing mining were the ones that were way more sophisticated in, t in how they were able to get these graphics cards. They were the first, they were the first in the know when it came to using the bots to like fly right through the checkout from Best Buy or fly right through the checkout on NVIDIA's own website. <laughs> like, that, that's the reason why NVIDIA, like, this was so bad. This was so bad that after this happened, NVIDIA, un, e even unto this day, NVIDIA no longer sells their own GeForce Founders Edition cards on their own website. Prior to 2020... Prior to the RTX 30 series, you could buy a Founders Edition graphics card straight directly from NVIDIA.com or GeForce.com. You do not have to go to Best Buy. You do not have to buy one from some scalper. Like, if you wanted a Founders Edition, you could just go on NVIDIA's website and buy one. But because the mining crowd went... It, it was so bad that NVIDIA's website went down. Like, their website went down for, like, 24 hours. Or at least the GeForce.com site went down. The NVIDIA.com one didn't go down, but the, the GeForce one definitely went down. So, because of that, NVIDIA stopped selling their Founders Edition cards directly. And, the, like, if you want one, you got to go to Best Buy if you're in the U.S. Like, that's the only way to get the Founders Edition cards now. Uh, obviously, in international, in other places, it's different, but in the U.S., Best Buy is the only game in town, really, for a Founders Edition. You cannot get one from Micro Center. You cannot get one from Newegg. You can definitely not get one from Amazon, at least unless you want to buy one from some scalper or third-party reseller. Uh, you have to get one from Best Buy. So, And that's because of what happened in 2020. People were still chasing RDNA 2, especially after NVIDIA started bottlenecking miners through VBIOS. Well, okay. Y Nero brings up a good point. So Radeon, Radeon was always there. So it's not like they're not buying Radeon. But the thing is, Radeon ran into a different kind of problem during this time. The problem for Radeon... Radeon was supply... Constrained. Radeon was supply constrained. So was NVIDIA. But not as badly. Because AMD has to buy X amount of capacity for CPUs and Y capacity for GPUs. And during that time, we all know how it was. The supply was so constrained for everyone involved... That's why PlayStation 5s were so hard to get. Xbox Series X was so hard to get. Um, all the NVIDIA cards were hard to get. All the AMD GPUs were so hard to get. This is the era of the John Travolta... I call it the John Travolta meme stream 
GPU trackers, the alert trackers. You know, those, those people who were literally live streaming on YouTube 24-7 showing the trackers of when a GeForce or Radeon GPU, and in some cases even Ryzen CPU, which I thought was kind of hilarious. And there's a reason why they were doing that, which we'll talk about a little bit later. But you guys remember the John Travolta, uh, the meme of, of John Travolta, I forgot what movie he was in, but the one where he's carrying his, his coat, his suit coat, and he walks in and he's like, he looks and he's like, you know, you know which one I'm talking about? The John, uh, fix it, fix it, fix it, fix it live stream. And then the, there was like a bunch of other ones. They all did the exact same thing. They would all like show the ticker alert for like when a GP would come in stock. They basically be pinging all the listings on like all the Newegg, all the Amazon, the Best Buy, the Ant Online, you know, etc. The eBay stuff. Like they were they were pinging everything and showing when it was coming in stock. It would make like a noise when it would come in stock. Like we had to live through that era. It was that bad that Newegg Shuffle popped up. Uh, Best Buy started selling their stupid premium subscription whatever thing service. Like entirely new business models cropped up out of nowhere just because somebody couldn't buy a GPU normally due to supply constriction. So Radeon was always there. Gamers still were trying to get Radeon. And the mining people were also buying Radeon, in particular the 6800. But the problem was AMD was not able to manufacture via TSMC. They were not able to have enough capacity to get above the demand curve. And as a result, Radeon was just kind of like never around. Like the 6900 XT was like $1,500. It was $500 over its MSRP for like... Pretty much its entire lifespan until, like, the tail end of last year. You know what I'm saying? So, that's kind of how it was. Radeon was supply constrained that entire generation. So was GeForce. Um, but NVIDIA only sells GPUs, so they would obviously have more capacity. So, that's kind of how that worked. Fast forward to where we are now. Pretty much, you guys can see the trend. I've, I've given you guys the map. I've given you guys the history book. 14 plus 3 equals 17. Well, okay, now this one technically is going to be like four years. But you guys get the idea, right? Like every three or two to three year blocks, there's like a... And technically 2020 was when this one started. So it's just 2021 was when it was so obvious that you were in this mess. So... That kind of puts 2024 on track. You know what I'm saying? It's like 2024 is now, it's the time, the time has come. The time has come for the return. The return of the king. BTC is coming back. You know it. So it's like, good luck. So what I think is going to happen is I think the cards that are going to be popular are going to be 40, 60 tie. Maybe 4060. Uh, the the, the 6700 XT will still be pretty good. And because there's still a lot of these around, I think these cards in particular, because they're 12 gigabyte cards, they're going to vanish overnight. Like, if they're still around when mining starts becoming profitable again. So it's basically these... Uh, like used 3070 is still going to be good if you can find one. Uh, and I, I think they're pretty easy to get at this point in time. But I think it's really going to be around this. These RDNA 2 GPUs were pretty good value because you can get them for cheap. And then uh, I guess if there's a new, like if, if RDNA 3, <laughs> maybe this one. Maybe the rumored 7600 XT that's supposed to launch next month, maybe that one ends up being really good. Who knows? I just, I don't see people who are going to do crypto. I don't see them buying up, like, the really expensive GeForce cards. I, I kind of think 4070 also might be really good at mining. 
the uh, the 7700 XT is the one that I think is going to be like the sleeper uh, like the sleeper hit. Like I feel like this one this one is often overlooked by gamers because it's too close in price to the 7800 XT. But I think for GPU mining, I think the 7700 XT might be really good. So may, that might be the smart man's buy. Like cuz it's largely ignored by gamers. So it might go on like sale every now and then. You might be able to get a good deal on those for crypto. Maybe Gigabyte knows something and the 3050 will be the... No, that's not going to happen. It doesn't have enough compute. It's very easy to tell. You just look at the compute. So it's going to be these cards. And I guess like less popular would be 4070 Ti and 7900 XT. Like, I think you can mine on these, but the problem is they're more expensive. In particular, 4070 Ti is, like, really expensive compared to some of these other cards. So, I think, yeah, I think this is going to kind of be the hierarchy in terms of what to mine on uh, when it comes to, like, the modern era of crypto. And I think this is... So, the thing is, what we don't know is, obviously, Bitcoin is still proof of work, but no one really mines Bitcoin anymore. So, but it's still going to be the driving force. But we don't know what the actual crypto that people are going to mine is going to be. So, it could be a very different landscape for mining next year compared to the previous generation. Because Ethereum had, like, two waves and then it finally went proof of stake and it's kind of like not on the radar anymore. But it, it's definitely talked about for like actual trading crypto or crypto investing. But like mining crypto, Ethereum is not really a thing anymore. So this is kind of the most unknown variable. Like what will actually be the crypto that people mine and then convert into Bitcoin or Ethereum or Solana, or whatever is popular at the time. So. Mining Nux may come back. Oh, yes. Okay, that, that is a great segue, Nero. That's a great segue. Because there's another thing that is going to happen. Well, it's been happening uh, recently. But CPU mining. CPU mining is coming back it's actually coming back now but only people who are paying attention to mining crypto would be aware of this cpu mining is a thing that started in the last wave of crypto so during 2021 cpu mining started as a thing now currently the best cpu the best like, I guess, mega hash per watt per dollar CPU is the Ryzen 9 3900X. This is the most iconic CPU for mining. The other one would be the Ryzen 9, uh, I think, 5900X. That's another one. I think the reason why the like the 12 cores are the ones that people mine on are mainly it has something to do with the L3 cache. There's something about Ryzen 9 12 cores like they they hit over a certain threshold in cache amount that they're like significantly better than an 8 core CPU and if you go up to a 16 core the problem with 16 core is it just costs so much more money that it it's ROI is not there. See, like this is the thing that a lot of people don't understand about mining. Mining is not like gaming in the sense that gaming, it's very obvious in terms of like, oh, the 4090 is the fastest GeForce. The 7900 XTX is the fastest Radeon. You know, like it's so obvious. And I think the problem is gamers, obviously... They will buy what they can afford, but they don't they don't put a whole lot of weight into 
the the value proposition. You know what I mean? Like, uh, what is that metric that you always see in reviews? Dollar per frame or something like that, or perf per watt. Like when it comes to mining, perf per watt is extremely important. But so is the dollar, or it's like mega hash. I think dollar per mega hash or mega hash per dollar. That metric is extremely, and obviously perf per watt. These are extremely important metrics. And that's the reason why these 12 core Ryzen previous generation Zen 2 and Zen 3 are the most popular CPUs for mining crypto. Uh, one might ask, well, what about, what about the Ryzen 9 7900? The reason why you don't see this one uh, used as often for mining crypto, although this will change as time goes by and it becomes harder and harder to get the older CPUs, the reason why the Zen 4 CPUs are not talked about or they're not really considered on a wide scale for mining is because they, they require DDR5. And DDR5 is still, when it comes to pricing, DDR5 is still more expensive than DDR4. Now, that will change sometime next year. There will be some kind of equilibrium point. However, that being said, it's so easy for someone to buy DDR4 on the used market. It's so easy to buy the motherboards and these 3900X CPUs for very cheap. So that's the reason why... The older Zen CPUs are the ones that uh, are largely exclusively used for mining. Like, I, I was the first thing that I was trying to figure out was well, why does nobody mine with Intel? Like, what's wrong with Intel CPUs when it comes to mining? There's something about Intel CPUs that makes them garbage for mining. I mean, unless you have like a Xeon, which is basically like a server class Intel CPU. Like an older Xeon, you could mine on one of those, but you know those typically have higher power consumption than the Ryzen CPU, and they're not as efficient. Like you're not getting as much mega hash per watt, so you know, like possible that AI cores may come into play. I don't know. Their machine learning core is not AI. Yeah, I don't think those have anything to do with mining, to be honest. Mining is a very, very repetitive, static thing. So, the, I'll tell you guys, the reason why the Ryzen CPUs are so good for mining is because I think they're really good at, like, encryption and decryption. Like, SHA, I think it's like, what, SHA-3 or SHA-3 or whatever it was. One of those algorithms, one of those encryption algorithms is very... The Ryzen CPUs are really good at decrypting encrypting. So, and that's that's the name of the game when it comes to crypto. That's like literally all crypto is. Hence the name crypto. You're encrypting, you're decrypting, you know, for the ledger. So, the Ryzen CPUs are vastly more efficient than the Intel CPUs at doing that. But I just don't understand like it's like none of the Intel CPUs are viable. I don't understand why, but it's like all the people that I've talked to that do that have actually done CPU mining, they told me like, basically I go about asking them like, hey, what what's what's a good CPU to mine with? And the the first thing, the instant response is like Ryzen 9 3900X. You don't need to worry about anything else. Just get Ryzen 9 3900X. And I ask them like, well, what about like, what about Intel Big Core, Little Core? And they're like, no, stay away. That stuff's garbage. And I'm like, well, why is it garbage? And it's like. They don't, they don't really know why, but they just know that it's not good. <laughs> so, But it has to do with the fact that Intel CPUs are not that good at encrypting and decrypting compared to Ryzen. So that's the reason why. Probably because they're all still basically Sandy Ridge. No, it has to do with encryption and decryption. But the thing is, the older Ryzens are also good. Like, you could mine on a Ryzen... Well, the thing is... The problem with the older Ryzen's are they're only like 8 core, right? Like 2700X is an 8 core. So they, they don't scale beyond 8. And I think that's that's the reason why these are like the king. When it comes to mining crypto, it's like these are the CPUs. That everyone, anyone who does CPU mining, they'll immediately tell you to do it. And the other reason why these are so good 
is because the in the case of th this one, this one includes Wraith Prism. Like, this one includes the Wraith Prism. So, that automatically, like, lowers the bomb cost for someone who wants to set up a mining, a CPU mining farm. Like, the fact that they don't have to buy a cooler at all because the CPU includes the cooler and it's good enough, they don't have to do anything, that saves a lot of money for realizing ROI. So... You know, that's another reason why that one is so popular compared to 5900X. Because 5900X does not include a box cooler. So, they're going to have to get like a bunch of Evo 212s or something. You know, like, they're going to have to get some kind of cheap air cooler. And that, it's annoying because they have to buy those separately. And that just adds to the price. The initial investment cost goes up and that doesn't look good, right? So that's the reason why this, the 3900X is like the king of CPU mining. And it probably will be the king of CPU mining for a long time. The, um, the, old, the one I can think of that will be the successor to that is the Ryzen 9 7900. This one also includes... I, I don't know if it includes Wraith Prism, but it, it includes a box cooler. That I know. The Non-X 7900. And the, the R9-7900 is a 65-watt TDP part. So I think that one will be the successor that everybody goes for when it comes to CPU mining. Once, it's, once it becomes harder to get the 3900X. But yeah, this is CPU mining. For those that don't know anything about CPU mining. So that really, I, I wouldn't worry about CPU mining. That won't really, I don't think that's going to make a dent in the PC DIY space. How often do people actually buy the 12 core Ryzen's for gaming? I don't think so, right? Like, for gaming, people will typically buy 7800X 3D. Uh, 7950X3D if they want, like, 16 cores. Um, they might buy 13, 900K, 13, 700K. So, the, the point is, the point I'm trying to make, maybe even 13, 600K. Like, the point is, I guess if they're cheap, they'll just go with that. Right? These are good enough. These are good enough for gaming. So, it's like, I think there won't be an issue in terms of overlap. Because the reason why we had such a mess in 2021 was because you had two groups of demographics competing for the same supply of parts in an age where supply shortages were the norm. The 12 core Ryzen CPUs are worse for gaming in general. Yeah, I know. That's the reason why. That's yeah. So that's that's the reason why there shouldn't be a problem if CPU mining. Uh, gets to the point where all the 12 core Ryzen's go out of stock. I don't foresee that happening because CPU mining has always been kind of a niche. It's like a niche within a niche. So unless there's some massive breakthrough and some new altcoin comes out next year that's so good on with CPU mining... That it gets to the point where it's like you can mine on any random cheap 6-core. Uh, although I still don't think a 6-core will be that good. Just because a 12-core essentially doubles your core count. Um, the 12-core is going to maintain the king position. It's like the top position for CPU mining in terms of value. 16-core costs too much money. 8-core uh, is not that much less money, but much lower hash rate. So... You know, that's why I kind of think it's going to stay 12 core for the foreseeable future. Um, but that's my prediction for what's going to happen. And as to when this happens, I think it's probably going to be the second half of next year. We'll, we'll have to pay attention to it throughout the year to figure out, like... Kind of figure out when 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 do you notice the tailwinds or I guess the headwinds of mining. It depends on your perspective, right? Like, 
If you're someone who, who does a lot of crypto mining, you see it as a tailwind. If you're someone who wants to build a gaming PC, it's definitely going to be a headwind when it starts showing up. All right, well, but that's going to be crypto for next year. So this is looking at 2024. Are there any major questions on any of this stuff? Like, did anybody have a hard time buying a GPU in 2021? Was, it, was anybody trying to buy a graphics card two years ago? Three years ago? Well, I guess three years ago would have... Yeah, th three years ago would have been really bad, but two years ago was when we were, like, in the middle of the... The terrible uh, supply shortage issue. It would have been like fall 2021. All throughout 2021 basically. That whole year was just like the dark times. <laughs> was forced to get a 5500 XT during shortages. Matt was trying to buy three years ago and wasn't able to. Oh yeah, we'll see. That was when like, that was when it was starting. It was starting three years ago, but it was literally like 2021. I had my work computer go out and it took three months to find a GPU. I had set up a bot to snipe one. The problem with Amazon was everything was overpriced. Everything was overpriced. The only way to get one at a normal price would have been to do like... Really, really, the bots for AMD's website. <laughs> because AMD didn't raise their MSRP, but, like, everywhere else, like, all the third-party sites, like, like uh, Amazon was the worst one. I would have never bought a GPU from Amazon during that time. No, I don't think you could, I don't think you could get MSRP back then. I don't believe you. You can get one from Amazon back then, but you can't get one at MSRP. Nero got 7800 XT. Wait, oh, what? Oh, oh, okay, you're saying you got the 7800 XT. Uh, wait, what GP did you even get, though? It kind of depends on what GP you got. The 7800 XT. Okay, but see, now is the time to get a GPU. Drove to Dallas Micro Center and they wanted me to buy into their lottery. They wanted me to buy into their lottery to be able to purchase a GPU. They had shelves. Oh, well, you got one. You said 2020, though. I'm talking about 2021. Yeah, you, yeah that's not... Well, it's still $100 over MSRP. Yeah, so you still overpaid, but not not by much though. But see, you got one, you got one before the supply shortages really took off. Drove lottery system. Wanted me to buy into their lottery to be able to purchase a GPU. They had shelves full of AMD GPUs, but refused to sell them. When was that? Because what I remember was throughout 2021 and, and it, okay, basically from the time the 30 series launched up until the, like the, the middle of 2022, like if you wanted to buy a GPU from Micro Center, they wanted to see your driver's license and they, they had to take a copy. They made a copy of your driver's license. If you wanted to buy a GPU from Micro Center, you actually had to have ID. Like you had to, you had to show them some form of ID because one of their anti-scalper measures was to basically like okay, if you bought a GPU from Micro Center, they would copy your driver's license and then you couldn't buy one for 30 days. Like you it set you on a 30 day cooldown effectively where you can't they wouldn't they would not sell you a GPU within the next 30 days of you buying a GPU that was one of their ways of combating scalpers because think about it like scalpers because here's what was happening so a lot of people don't know this but what they what people were doing was people were literally paying 
other people, either their friends or somebody that they knew, or they might not even be paying them. If it was like a friend, they would just they would buy a GPU, then they would have their friend go in the store and buy another GPU, not for their friend, but for them. So they would pay their friend for that GPU. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, if I was going to set up a mining farm, like I would go in, I would buy one GPU, and then someone else would go in and they would buy that other GPU. For me, I'd pay them for that GPU and then I'd have two GPUs. So they had a lot of people doing this trying to sidestep the limited one per customer because they only had like one, there were only uh, limited quantities, one per customer. So you couldn't buy two GPUs, like you could only buy one. But people, the way people were sidestepping this was they would have their friends and their family members go into the store and buy the second and the third and the fourth and the fifth GPU for them. So... At that point, Micro Center started taking people's ID. So it's like, okay, your friend came in. Well, okay, now they can't buy one for 30 days. You know, like someone else came in. Okay, now they can't buy one for 30 days. So basically, they made it so that you couldn't get one uh, for 30 days. Like, they, they did that for like two years. You had to pay $100 to what? To be put into some drawing to have a chance to buy a GPU? Yeah, I don't remember that. I don't remember that. I do remember they had... They did have these... Uh, I don't know how people found out about it. I guess it was through Micro Center's Twitter or something. Like, Micro Center had uh, people line up. Like, hold on, let me see if I can find the video. Because it's pretty terrible, like, what people had to do. Uh, Micro Center... Let me see if I can find one. Yeah, okay, let's see, like, hold on. Let me see if I can share this video. Yeah, yeah, hold on, let me bring this up. Okay, this... I like how this guy's shirt says chaos, chaos, chaos. Uh, this is the Dallas Micro Center. Look, check this out. This is the RTX 3080 Ti release at Micro Center. This was two years ago. This was June 3rd, 2021 was when they uploaded this. But this this card launched, I think, in like March of 2021. So, look at this. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that line. Look at all those people. Oh, shit. You see that? All those people, all those people are trying to buy a 3080 Ti. And this is the Dallas Micro Center. I think he was in his car. The, red, the one in red? Yeah, that's why they don't like him. <laughs> They're like... This is retarded. <laughs> I like how the line guy at the end is like, this is retarded. So the thing is, see, the, the thing is, pretty much 90% of that entire crowd of people are literally just scalpers. They're literally just going to resell. The, they're they're going to try to flip the thing on eBay or Amazon Marketplace as a third-party seller. Like, no joke, that's what they're there to do. They're not gonna, they're not buying a 3080 Ti for themselves. Okay, maybe, like I said, 90%. So there's like 10% of the people there are legitimately trying to buy the GPU. But the rest of them are just gonna try to resell it as a scalper. Like, that's literally what's going on here. So, and there, there are similar events like this from Best Buy, I think... Best Buy had their... I forget how you even learned about the Best Buy one. That's the Micro Center you drove over 12 hours to get to and got nothing. Yeah. Yeah, it's... it's it, yeah. Because, I mean, look at what you're competing with. Look at, look at this. Look at that field of people there. Look at that. Look at that! Look at how they like run! Look at them running! Running across the grass!
There was a dude in his car. Okay, that's why they get mad. Cause they got mad because this one guy. Hold up, let me back up. Hey, there's people that are in their cars. So they're basically, people started fighting after that. Yeah, see like this one guy in the striped shirt and the, the red guy in the SUV. This, the dude in the very front of the line, he was in his car. Because I think... I think they weren't supposed to be in their car. I think the store manager was... I think... You'll see him later. Like, the guy in the pink shirt, I think that's either the store manager or supervisor or something. I think he was in his car. You can already tell by looking at the, that wad of people that there's not enough cards. You can tell there's not enough cards for that many people. Like, so yeah, it's sad for the people who drove really, really far. Like, BPD drove 12 hours and got nothing. There's a, probably a whole bunch of people there that also drove from far away and got, like, nothing that day. Like, guaranteed. Because usually they would have, what, like, 30 cards? 30 to 50 cards? Maybe 100 cards for launch. That's definitely more than 100 people right there. Like, you saw all those people just, like... Look at that. That's that's way more than 100 people. Look at that. Oh, and, and the camera's not even showing the ones that are f coming from the back. Like, from the trees at the back side of the store over here. Man, that's crazy. This is what I call... when I When I think of the last crypto wave... I refer to it as the dark times. We kind of laugh about it now, looking back. But, I mean, this truly was the dark times. <laughs> and what's funny is this is the time when people were still, like, wearing masks. Like, see, there's a bunch of people here that are wearing their masks. The face masks, because of the pandemic. So, like, man, that's crazy. You've been happy to find a GT1030 at that point. It would be sad to drive there and see a lonely... GT 1630. See, the thing is, those low end cards were in stock. Throughout this entire time frame, the low end GPUs were always there. It was really like 60 class and above was what you could not get. So, like 3050, 3050s were always around, but no one really cared. Because the thing is, like, a game, like the typical gaming PC is not going to be gaming on a 3050. And the, the typical scalper isn't even going to bother with a 3050. They're only there to sell this thing. What's funny about, what's ironic about this whole thing, this is the 3080 Ti that they're trying to buy. The 3080 Ti is an LHR card. <laughs> Every 3080 Ti is an LHR card. So it's like, it's, it's kind of hilarious. One of the six a uh, fifty six hundred XT back then. RK, I remember that well. Got a thirty eighty Strix for eleven hundred. Here in my yeah, see that's that's more realistic of the prices of this time of twenty twenty one. Here in my country, cards were readily available, but the price were outrageous. Well, the price was outrageous everywhere. See, that was the problem. See, so the problem the problem was, Nvidia cards were so overpriced. Because they were getting scalped left and right. AMD cards, you could get them at MSRP, but they were like always out of stock. Like almost always out of stock. Unless you were using that bot thing uh, and pinging AMD's website every Thursday. Otherwise, you had to pay, you had to overpay like everybody else for one of these type of cards. Even if it was an AMD card. Because even the AMD ones were overpriced too. They were in stock, but they grouped them in with the expensive ones and refuse to sell them without getting put into their lottery. Yeah, I forget when they did the lottery. I mean, they started that program and they they stopped doing it after a while. Let me see. Micro Center Scalper Line. Let me see if there's like another video. Hold up, let me see. What is this? Is this like a... Take a look at the scene. Okay, see, check this out. Check this out. In from Sky 4 this morning, people with sleeping bags, <laughs> blankets, chairs, and a ton of patients waiting for Beyonce tickets. 
No. No, actually Don't it was do not. That. This was, I would be running out. No, true. <laughs> no this was uh, the scene at Micro Center uh, in Merlin, uh, Madison Heights. Yeah, you wouldn't look at that. Look at the tents. They got the tents going and everything. Look at the, look at those la lounge chairs. Those got lawn lawn chairs, that fold up chairs. Case, but they were all clamoring for something very interesting. People from as far as Minnesota line up overnight for computer graphics cards. This is Detroit. This is out of Ravaloni. Tells us tonight. People it's drove from Minnesota into Michigan all the way over to the other the Michigan, like all the way down. Well. Recently, the physical manifestation of the computer chip shortage and then all has been back lots up into of Detroit. parked pickup trucks that they can't deliver and empty dealer lots. But this is another one. Hundreds of June people 4, lining 2021. up on a daily basis trying to get exceptionally rare computer chips for home computers and gaming consoles. Look at With that. their lawn chairs, blankets, and bleary Look at eyes, that. The dark times. These are the dark times. Group. We've been out here since about 4 p.m. yesterday. Alex Burr is in town from St. Cloud, Minnesota, visiting friends and took a chance, winding up third in line. He came out to the Micro Center Computer Component and Accessory Store, where he found this list telling him what he could buy. Oh, look, 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 look at that. Hey, check it out, check it out. Look at the prices on these. Look at the prices on these. RTX, EVGA, GeForce RTX 3080 for the Win 3, uh, 10 gigabyte. 889 so basically nine it's about 900 dollars right it's going over 900 with tax so 890 dollars for a 3080 that's actually not that bad that's actually not that bad i've seen a lot worse you know like rk was saying paid uh 1100 for his strix yeah that's actually more in line with what i remember uh 3080 xc3 from evga eight hundred fifty dollars evga geforce rtx 3090 for the win three one thousand eight hundred eight so basically about nineteen hundred dollars nineteen hundred dollars for that 3090 uh there was another one up there it was like eleven hundred dollars and check it out thirty seventy eight hundred dollars yeah geforce uh 3090s they're pretty much the top of the line this guy's trying to buy an rtx 3090 this is the type of person that buys an rtx 3090 and uh, they cost about 1800 dollars a piece they cost about 1800 dollars a piece you heard that right 1800 dollars <laughs> Game, gaming consoles <laughs> well, you couldn't buy the gaming consoles either <laughs> the gaming consoles people couldn't even get those either Everyone's after the same thing. <laughs> Look at how far this goes. The line goes all the way down to the street and then around the parking lot. Son Bozzy of Dearborn wanted this limited white card edition. And hey, somebody got a 3080 for $1,160. That's $1,159.99 for an RTX 3080 10 gigabyte. He paid over. Almost about twelve hundred dollars with tax. It's gonna be over twelve hundred with tax. Nvidia thirty eighty series. This card I've been waiting for months, and I finally got the opportunity to. <laughs> so the thing is, the thing with the thing is, okay. The problem is this. This whole era of computing hardware conditioned buyers to accept these outrageous prices. And that's the reason why 40 series, when those cards launched earlier this year, though they were lower price than what you had to pay for during the pandemic, for 30 series, they are, if you compare MSRP to previous generation MSRP, it's a lot worse value. Grab one. So what do these expensive chips do? Well, they run computer graphics, the picture on your computer screen, and they get used for a lot of things. Either playing video games, uh, mining cryptocurrency, or they're reselling them, the secondary market for the cards. You Notice what he just said. Notice what he just said. They either play video games, or they mine crypto, or they resell them on the secondary market. Because I can assure you, most of the people that were doing this were reselling these cards. 
Most of these people that are out in these lines, they don't ha they don't mine crypto or they don't do it on a large scale. So they're trying to sell these to a gamer who is desperate and isn't going to want to go and sit in line for this. Or they're going to try to sell them on the secondary market to uh, someone who's just doing crypto. Although I, I don't know. The thing is, if you're a large organization that was really, really doing crypto, you were not really buying GPUs this way. You were kind of skipping the line entirely and going direct through the resellers. That was that whole thing about EVGA or MSI selling direct to the, like, they were, they were basically bypassing Micro Center, Newegg, and they were like basically going direct to the people that were mining crypto. And it was kind of a big, big mess for everybody. You can get about twice your money. Bitcoin's not available right Did now. Did you see, hey, hold up. Wait, 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 this guy walked out of the store. See, okay, look. This dude bought two graphics cards, and then I think he bought one. Oh, mine, but you he bought, okay, this guy bought, oh wait, that might be a power supply, never mind. You can also use it for other ones like Ethereum. So that, those guys are doing crypto. If, he, if he's buying a 1500 watt power supply, he's doing crypto. Or Dogecoin, or other certain types of crypto. Do you hear him say he wants to mine Dogecoin with this? Ah. <sighs> that you desire that's the journey done <laughs> the journey <laughs> they tell us here that this line has been forming in some form for the past several weeks and that it's likely not to be here tomorrow because usually it's tuesday to friday that they get their deliveries but expect during the week next week and in the days to come for more lines and scenes just like this one in madison heights rod maloney local four Awesome. Yeah, so you guys can see it was a mess. So that's why, you know, I'm trying to set expectations because if this crops up again next year and if it coincides with a new GPU launch, it's going to be the same thing all over again. They look like twins. Uh, there was, I'm trying to find, let me see if I can find that. Okay, see, like, okay, here's one, here's one. 11.44 p.m. Saturday. This is it, guys. This is the sort of thing. The journey, the journey to Micro Center. See, people have to drive far and wide. Like BP, BDP was talking about earlier with the 12 hour drive. Hey, December 5th. This I is what Micro people, Center. okay, notice this guy's saying Friday, December 5th. That means that this was 2020. Gonna be first in line, hopefully, for the AMD Radeon 6900 XT that comes out on Tuesday. Oh man, this guy is ready. Look at that. Oh wait, hold on. I don't want to get I don't want to get demonetized. I don't know if the song is uh Hold on, let's see. Saturday, almost Saturday, midnight. December 5th. This would have been 2020. Let me see. Yeah, December. Okay, so this is the 6900 XT launch. This guy's December camping 5th. for the 6900 Just got the micro XT center launch. in the parking lot. Uh, it's completely empty. Nobody, importantly, is in that spot just yet. And I am going to take the gear out of the car, get it set up. Uh, I think I'm just going to park over there and just hang. Car's dashboard looks I like mean, a gaming setup. <laughs> you know, having the ch chair here and being here, uh, I'll probably hang out in the car until I start to see some movement or somebody pull up and then probably jet back over. Um, just to stay warm because it's about 30 degrees here right now in St. Louis. Dude, um, this is this is the St. Louis. This is the St. Louis Micro Center, and he is sitting out there in in freezing weather, 30 degrees. So that's like that's like below zero degrees Celsius. That's like negative one Celsius weather. But really looking forward to it. I mean, it's pretty early, but I want to have... But this is what it's like to be the first in line. <laughs> an option at the 6900 XT. I really hope on Tuesday they show up here. 
Hopefully this thread can get going and AMD can ensure that there's at least one here. That'd be really crappy to stay here for three days. Um, He's nobody's gonna fault have to camp besides for myself because I'm taking that chance. But um, yeah, well, let's, let me get this thing unpacked. And you tried to right, buy guys, it's one, oh, one for me like and one for my Nana. <laughs> on Sunday morning. Um, so now I'm in the tent. I don't know if you can <laughs> Man, see these, me these type well. of videos. Oh God, small little These type of videos are really nice because they chronicle it fire a piece for a second, of history. A little warm up in here. You know, it's actually that, that pretty, can often be pretty warm in here considering it's 30 degrees. Got the jackery there. I'm going to hook up some of my gear. This that, guy came recharged prepared. recharge tonight. And got the cot set up and the uh, Sub-Zero sleeping bags. And tent's all closed up. Look at that. So... I'll catch you guys in the morning. Waking up. Okay, let me let me skip through here. Planner sitting out there, you guys can see, and we're good right now, 100%. So that charged that up. And day, so I'm gonna actually be working from here. Also, he's gonna um, be working. So he's gonna be working from tent, <laughs> not working from home, working from tent. <laughs> in the afternoon side, that I'll be able to do a stream with you guys. Um, but. I wanted to also shout out to the two dudes that were standing in line here earlier because uh, they only let so many people into a store. Uh, it get filled up pretty good. And so they had to line out in front. So people were. What's up, guys? <laughs> Watching a little bit of football. DBT Jason came out and joined me. He's going to get it. You want a 6900 too, don't you? 6900 yeah. XT? Yeah. You came out with 6900 XT. He's number two, number two in line. So the BBT <laughs> crew representing out in St. Louis. I'm watching this play. And he caught that play. What's up? So I got my tent over here. <laughs> Dude, Jason's got his tent uh, over there. You know, my favorite BBT thing about this. Play, what's up? My, so my favorite thing my, about this video. Hold on. Go back. Go back. Gonna get, hopefully a, a pair. He's got his tent over there. BBT crew representing in St. Louis. We're going to get, hopefully oh, here, Jason oh, Lewis. No I'm watching this. I, I love how they have the little uh, fold-up table. Do you see that? They have the laptop on the fold-up table. <laughs> Even about the fold-up table. Play. And he caught that. It's those little like TV dinner tables. I don't know what you call those things. Play, what's up? <laughs> so I got my tent over here. Jason's got his tent over there. BBT crew representing in St. Louis. <laughs> We're going to get hopefully a, a pair of uh, 6900 right, XTs now. Let's see. All right, guys, we're out about 20 minutes before start. I did a walkthrough with everybody. There's probably about 45 people in line. 45 Everybody's people getting ready. Are now Most of the people up. pack up their tents. Uh, we're starting to see some of the, the 6900 reviews, XTs, well, as expected. Um, I want to see some more overclock reviews and see how things are. But anyway, you know, let's if we can get like 2800 megahertz out of it, which would be pretty sweet. Uh, with the top down, it's like 30 degrees outside. Gotta love the Midwest sometimes. So we just the got a TV tray. Our line passes. I wasn't. I was. Oh, he did. He got it. He got his voucher. So, so it looks like for this, <clears throat> for this launch, they had the 6900 XT, the 6800 XT, or the 6800. You could choose one of those three. I should make it a tweet. Um, so it looks like I did get, or I'm got at least a piece of paper that says I get one. Uh, I'm going to get the power color one. Uh, BBT Jason's going to get the ASRock one so we can actually be able to do both tests with both of the lines. They had 10 GPUs. So AMD got 10 in for the 6900 XTs. In theory, since they're referenced, they should be able to crossfire. Yeah, in theory, since they're referenced, hopefully we can try a crossfire with the two. So oh, it's all referenced. Jason starts. and I will, will uh, I'll grab both and be able to do two 6900 XTs. We're going to have to do a power, power supply swap out tomorrow, tonight or today with uh, probably the 1600 T2 to be able to get the right power requirement for two of them, but right. It's like the doors are opening. But see, okay. All right, awesome. This was before, Three days. Th this is before you had to overpay. This is, this is still when things were at MSRP. This is 2020. If you bought in 2020, you could still get them at MSRP, but it was really hard. Stay the right. If it was 2021 where everything went crazy. Right. Three days of commitment, dudes, and here for the card. I'm, I'm actually going to use it, so it's it's good. Like people, like why would you stay out there for, you know, three days and do this? And it's what you have to do for the hardware these days. It's just what it is. I didn't make the rules, bro. I'm just living within that reality. So I'm just. Li I like that quote. I'm just living within that reality. Because this is what you had to do. All right, my dudes. I mean, unless you, <clears throat> unless you were. Uh, three days of time. Buying one later, and they had all the bots and yes. stuff set up by that by then. After launch, they have there. They have a whole bunch of 37s. How many? 
They've got some 3070s. They got 3060. 3070s you guys end up getting. Yep, he's got me over here. Oh, no, that's 3070. It's all 3070. Bummer you guys didn't get any processors in, huh? Yeah, everything just seems to be really random. Yep, awesome. Do you do the install warranties typically? I usually don't. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Your videos later on. Thanks, buddy. I'm, I'm going to put together a blog for the three days and stuff. You guys have been awesome, man. Thanks, guys. <clears throat> so, they're the first awesome. ones. So, yeah, what's the box changes? Yeah, the boxes are different. Yeah, the boxes are different. Here, go up. I think they're all yeah. reference cards. Rock and then the so it doesn't code. matter Pretty which. Good. Long. The only difference long is going to be in the warranty. Congrats, guys. Fulfillment. Congrats. It's good when a lot of folks get product after staying out there for, even if they're out there for a, even a day, anytime you set out for that and you get something. They had 21 GPUs for the 3070s. Yeah. I almost, almost went around. I almost walked out. Okay. So, but see, that's, that's how it was. So we could be looking at this sort of thing coming back with the next GPU launch because it's like there's a GPU launch with no crypto. Then there's a GPU launch within crypto. Then there's a GPU launch with no crypto, then a GPU one with crypto. So the 50 series could be looking at, uh, this sort of thing happening. Show more from this guy. You, uh, well, Hold on, let me see if I can find uh, RTX, RTX 30. See, the thing is, the 3080 launch is kind of like this one. Because the launches that happened in 2020 were not, I mean, they were really, really hard to get the cards. But the launches that happened in 2021, which was basically, I think, 30... 3080 tie, 3070 tie, RTX 3070 tie. But well, hold on, let me see. RTX 30 3080 tie Best Buy outside Best Buy. Let me see. We can find these. Is there any weird videos like that? I want to get one of like people in line at a Best Buy. I'm not finding any. RTX 3070 tie launch. Camping, I guess. Overnight at Microsoft. Hold on, let me see. Okay, this one has a bunch of music, though, so I don't even know. Wait, hold on. Let me show you guys. Hold on, this one probably has like some kind of copyrighted song. YouTube audio library. Okay, maybe not. Okay, here I am the day before the 3070 Ti launch, heading out to Micro Center in Westbury, Long Island. It's going to be a little confusing for the first few hours because people are going to show Long up. Long Island and, Micro Center, uh, I guess. You thinking they could get a car. It's always Micro Center. I want to find one that's like a Best Buy. Okay, so it looks like it's uh, 641 in the morning, the day before the launch. Okay, we're approaching Micro Center. This right is for now. the RT we'll what the, uh, This is for the RTX 3070 tie. Like I'll see a line. Spending the time, you know, doing all sorts of things. Right here they're playing chess. <laughs> I won't tell you who's winning or losing though. Okay, here's my chair sitting here in fourth position. Long haul, though. It's only about a quarter to 11 in Jensen the morning. Jensen's going to have to issue another before. apology we'll from his kitchen. <laughs> okay, it's about 11.30, and I'm back at Micro Center again. Let's see what this line looks like. I'm going to have to buy some spare GPUs before this happens again. <laughs> in a minute. Has it grown a little? I have three GPUs it with a 4090. Da, 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 yeah. There it is right now. Oh, you can see the, the people that are in the first Hi, how you doing line. tonight? Hey, how you doing? Um, I'm just here to uh, camp out and pick up uh, the new big thing, that graphics card. Is there any... <laughs> this, do you hear what he said? The way he said it. The way this guy said it. 
<laughs> you know this guy is going is a scalper. This is this is how you can tell if it's a scalper. He doesn't even know the name of the graphics card that he's going to buy. He doesn't even know what the name of the graphics card is. Go back, go back, go back. Go back. Hold on. Hi, how you doing tonight? Hey, how you doing? Um, I'm just here to uh, camp out and pick up a, the new big thing, that graphics card. The new big thing, that graphics card? Sorry. Is there any particular- <laughs> <laughs> this is a this is this is a scalper. It's so obvious. This is a scalper. He's all he's there. He's only there to buy the 3070 tie or whichever one he can get because he doesn't even know if he's going to be able to get that one. And he's going to flip it on eBay or or Facebook Marketplace or whatever, you know? Or Craigslist, whatever. Like it's so obvious. The one you're looking for? Uh, what is it called? There's a 3070. Okay, he knows 3070. 3070 Ti, and then 30, there's a 3080. I'm 30 getting 80. a 3070. Okay. okay, he's planning 3070 Ti. Okay. What if there's some 3080s that show up? It'll probably cost like $300 more to get exactly. those. Exactly. If, it, if it's in my budget, I'll be sure to pick that up. Okay. Reasonable price, you know? Yeah, that's what a lot of people here are waiting for. Are they? Yeah. Hope the hope that a third bunch of 3080s come in like they did yesterday. Exactly, it's a high when demand for them, and we don't. This know was June 2021, so, so this is during the, the time when everything was overpriced. Know, keep our fingers crossed and uh, you know pray that you know. Legends buy their I GPUs at Goodwill. <laughs> what are you gonna do with your card? <laughs> I'm gonna use it for gaming. Uh, I'm Eight gigabyte on the 3070 time was dumb. I need that extra FPS. Aged real bad. FPS gives your gives 3070 Ti was such a bad value. I could use it, you know. Is there any particular games you play more of than others? Uh, I play shooting games. There's this game called Warzone. It's probably one of the biggest games in the world besides Fortnite, but it's a really fun game. I feel bad I'm for really the 40 series scalpers that got wow. stuck with their GPUs. Uh, yeah, I have that one too. I played a little bit. I would. Man, I, he interviewed that guy for I a get long killed. time. You look familiar. Last week, I think I interviewed you twice, didn't I? Uh, yes, you did. Yeah. And, um, and you got a card last week, right? I did get a card. I was able to get the 3080 Ti. Wow. Okay, notice notice that this guy, he saw this dude the previous week, and that guy was able to get a 3080 Ti. So, why is he in line again? <laughs> so, obviously, these people are scalpers. The fact that he's back to buy another one. See, this is, this is why Micro Center implemented the driver's license or the ID thing for one, one GPU every 30 days. Because of people like this. It's working, it's pretty nice. Uh, and now I'm online here for the 3070 Ti, uh, seeing how that's gonna go. And uh, yeah, I'm feeling pretty hopeful. See, okay, if he already bought a 3080 Ti, why is he here to buy a 3070 Ti? See what I mean? This is, this is the problem, because you had lots of scalpers doing this stuff. Well, we have a pretty good spot too, so. What's your number in this line? It's uh, 11. Yeah, you're getting one. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I think there was rumors saying that I they already had I don't feel bad for the scalpers, something. they deserve I'm not entirely money. sure, but just just rumors right now, so. Yeah, yeah, but, um, uh, yeah that's excited. the thing. Because yeah. it's, pe it's people like this hey, that, that are buying multiple GPUs or another second, another one and just built? flipping them. This morning I went to a different micro center and uh, same deal, you know. I didn't know uh, people are going to be camping out. I thought I was just going to walk in and uh, you know, pick up parts, but um, yeah, there, there's a lot of people uh, shopping around for uh, uh, cards and stuff. What, what are you going to use your card for if you get one? I'm going to be using it for a flight sim, mostly, okay. right? But I want a multi-purpose build, you know, probably okay. uh, mess this around guy, with games. This guy, and, I don't know, watch stuff and... Uh, this guy allegedly okay, maybe, uh, wants a 3070 uh, Ti uh, you know, CAD for Microsoft Flight yeah. Simulator. So you looking for what? A Can a 3070 Ti even handle Microsoft 30, Flight 80, Simulator? Ideally. Yeah. A lot of people here are, yeah. Probably uh, settle for a 3070 as well, but uh, not willing to go below below that performance. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's about it. Oh, good. How about you? Uh, times, well, this time eight, out, one. last week I was uh, monitoring the line <laughs> three times. Yeah. Uh, I didn't really put my name on the list until the last morning, and I was 124. Wow. And it, I think it's about a quarter to ten now, yeah, yeah, and yeah. Uh, I think we have something like 50 people yeah, yeah. on the line already. So uh, it's growing rapidly in the last hour or so. So I suspect we're going to have 100 people by the time the store opens up in the morning. But we'll have to wait and see. You know? The movie theater is starting up here again. Wow. 
Hey, that's cool. Wait, Can what? I make the night a little more interesting? What do you think? They've got like a projector. The same, the same crew too that did it last time. Hi, how you doing tonight? I'm um, doing well. How about yourself? Good. So it's obvious, but what are you here for today? Yeah, so I'm here for uh, I'm here for a graphics card. Okay. Uh, what are you going to use this graphics card for? Just curious. Um, I'm actually not going to use it, so I'm sitting in as a proxy for okay. a friend. I uh, see, see. At least someone was telling the truth. At least he admits the truth. This dude is here to buy another GPU for his friend who's probably already bought one and is on the 30 day cooldown. So this guy is came over here to see he's, oh wow, see? He um, does before, yeah. Yeah, my friend got one uh, at last week's drop and- His friend got one at last week's drop. There's a 30 day rule, so he's not- There's alive. a 30 day rule, there we go. There's the proof, it's on video. To right, get right. another one yeah. for another couple weeks. So. He wants to get another one. So yeah, that rule is fairly it. new, actually. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I get why they do it, but um, but yeah. To be honest, I'm not very knowledgeable about these cards, but I'm doing him a favor. For so this guy song. isn't even a PC enthusiast. He doesn't care. He's just he, he's just a good friend. Do you have any idea what he's looking to get? Uh, I need to double check with him before before 9 a.m. or 10 a.m. Uh, this morning when it ends up coming out. But I, I think the 3080. But I need to double check with him exactly. What yeah, he's that's a very for. popular one. I have a couple. Man, of those, that's but... so definitely scalpers. That's he, the 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 friend is trying to flip this stuff on eBay or market Facebook marketplace. So obvious. Uh, probably six or seven hours. That's it. Oh, would you come? What the? It's not that midnight or one heavy in the morning or something. A little before midnight. 4060. Oh. And what are you hoping to get here today? 4060. Honestly, I don't mind. I prefer to get a 3070 Ti, but so 30, I don't mind time, if it's a 30, I just don't want to go home empty-handed. Ah, uh, yeah. yeah. Well, do you know what your position is in line? I'm um, in the 60s. The this 60s? guy looks like a younger version of James Pryor. That's so <laughs> possible. Yeah. Well, you know, last week for the 3080s, they got like 70, 30, 80 Ti's alone. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. No, I was here. I wasn't on the line officially. I was just I kept coming interviewing people. Gotcha, gotcha. This guy just wants a yeah, GPU. And that video did pretty well. Yeah. So um, I can't. What are you going to use your card for if you get it? Whatever it is. Uh, I'm one. a pretty big gamer, so probably okay. Just some so order. gaming in general. Yeah. The uh, do you have a build already that would go into or? Yeah, yeah. I have a, I have a pretty pretty decent build. I would say I, I'm rocking a 2070 right now. Okay. So I'm not like really. I so don't, he has I don't really a 2070 and he wants to go to a 3070 Ti. Need it, but why not? Because <laughs> since the market's so inflated, I could basically get like a free upgrade. Right, 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 right. Yeah, so that's why I said, yeah, why not? It's nice weather. I don't really have much to do. Yeah, so. it was hot. Yesterday, it came at like midnight, one o'clock in the morning or something. Yeah, yeah, around there. What are you hoping to get in today? The 3070 Ti. 3070 okay, Ti. Me too. That's yeah. a good one. Um, I'll do a video of mine. <laughs> to uh, you know, to show what it looks yeah. like and stuff, and that'll be some good content. <laughs> I'll do performance testing on it. I don't do the games yeah. because there's always a complaint that I miss somebody's game. Yeah. So I just do standard performance testing. Hi, how you doing today? Good. How are you? Good. Good. Uh, you just got here, right? Yeah. Let me you see. Think what the time person, is it now? The, it's the just person before using 46 dies yeah. getting around 50. What are you hoping FPS to get here today? Uh, probably a 3070 Ti. 3070 yeah, Ti again. Just a release date for it. Yeah. yeah. If they actually have it by that, I'll get I'll even get a chance. Uh, 3080. That's a lot of people up front want 3080s instead know, of the 3070 like, Ti. Yeah, a lot of them. That's what I was saying. If I get a chance, I doubt it though. What are you gonna do with this when you get it? What what you what I'm are you using it for? I'm actually going to build a PC. Like if I'm able to get it, I'm actually gonna build everything right now. If I can't, then well, I'll just delay. Oh, so you're gonna it's a brand new PC then? You don't already yeah, have an so existing one. Yeah, I'm going one. to be like building everything from scratch. Okay. Okay, that's great. I right, wish you luck. And thanks for the thanks for doing. See you later. Okay, it looks like the truck is coming in from Keystone right now. The Keystone, I see Keystone truck. Keystone on it. So you can imagine the people who lived through this, like for like they were on the ground in He's line. He's going the other way. These guys will never forget this experience of what it was like to buy a 30 series GPU Okay, the truck is going in there. I don't want to take the truck or driver. I guess an out. RDNA 2 it's going GPU into Micro in Center right now. And so that's the truck. Hopefully there's a lot of cards in there for everybody. Do you remember if any of these trucks got robbed or something? Most people uh, want to get here. Yeah, there was, there was a story... Uh, there was a story about like an EVGA truck getting robbed. 
Hi there, how are you doing today? Good, I'm very great. Just what time did you get here today? But it was like only one, it was the only one that I know of. What's your position in line, do you know? Uh, I think like number 83. 83, okay. So anyway, you guys so can see, hold on, let me skip to the part, look at that line. Look at that. Wow. What's that? Yeah. They didn't have that many, really, of the 3070 TIs. Look at that, all the way to the back. Okay, that line's actually not that bad. It only, it goes all the way around. It goes, like, from the front, all the way across, and then around the back. But it's not, like, looping around well, the store over. or anything. Uh, it looks like an estimate about 70 cards of different types and different brands. If you look up in the corner here. So, here it is. So, this is the voucher. So, you had to choose, you could choose all the way down from a 3060 all the way up to the 3090 GeForce RTX 30 series graphics cards purchase voucher to purchase please present to associate and build your own department must redeem by 11 a.m. on June 6 or June 10th 2021 limit one voucher per customer okay uh, I thought they were going to say something in here about the ID, ID verification or something, but I guess that's when you're in the, in the checkout. And it looks like the SKU that he's getting is the ASUS 3070 Ti Strix OC. So, that's what it was like. So, we could be going back to that next year, potentially with the 50 series launch so just setting expectations so that nobody's shocked if and when it happens because we went from essentially one one cycle where there was no crypto then there was a, so basically 20 series was not in the crypto wave it was like out of the wave 30 series was approaching the wave going into the wave uh, so that was the GP one that was in the wave. So then we had 40 series, which was out of the wave. And now we're going to 50 series, which is going into the wave again. So it's it's like the movie Interstellar. You think about Miller's planet, the water planet, the gravitational tidal force where you go into the, into the wave and then you go out of the wave. So we're basically approaching that crypto wave. So the only, the other thing I wanted to kind of look at here, uh, I guess the last thing, I guess we can talk, we, we, we don't have to talk about crypto anymore. I know that that's not something that most people that watch my channel are into, uh, but I guess the last thing, the only other thing I had was games of 2023 that I thought were good versus all the other games as a whole. So, obviously, I'm not going to talk about Baldur's Gate 3. Baldur's Gate 3 was just good in general. Um, the games that I thought that were really good, from a technical standpoint, uh, in terms of actually using the GPU, would have been... I, mean, I have a list here. Let me pull up my list. Just ordered a 4060 as a backup. Why that, though? Why the 4060? I don't think the 4060 will be the one that's hard to get, though. It could be, but I don't know if that'll be the one that people target. I think it's really going to be 4060 Ti and 4070. Um, but anyway, so Forspoken... Forspoken was a game that came out and was very interesting because it used direct storage. Dead Space Remake was... A really good looking game although it did have a lot of like stutter loading in and out of parts of the level kind of like Elden Ring Hogwarts Legacy was really good and that game actually didn't have a lot of issues at launch other than the VRAM thing for cards that had 8 gigs or less of VRAM other than that though that game ran pretty well it didn't really have a lot of problems it was a good game uh then I have here, I guess I can do a list of games I did not like. Or games that had really, really bad issues at launch. 
If crypto eats GPUs up again, laptop GPUs are good enough these days as a system replacement where gaming is concerned. Yes, but the thing is, gaming on a laptop is never the same as gaming on a desktop. The laptop is always loud. The laptop doesn't perform as well. Typically, you know, you don't have access to the full mechanical keyboard. And, the, I mean, you obviously have the mouse, though. But, it, I mean, it's, yeah, good enough, I guess. But, uh, I don't know. I'd rather use an old GPU. I probably won't use it unless one of the others go out. In your opinion, which is best to stream game? The 7800X 3D or the 7900X? I just bought a power color 7900X TX. Uh, the 7800X 3D is, like... If we're just talking about gaming, the 7800X 3D is the best one. Uh, streaming, obviously, you can use the XTX. So, again, the 7800X 3D would be better um, all around. Now, the 7900X, for gaming, it's okay. It's not like it's bad because it's still a modern CPU. It still gives you the ability to upgrade in the future, like two or three years from now. On the same socket so it has longevity it does perform better than the 7800x 3d in multi-threaded workloads particularly if you're doing video editing that's one example that i can give you where the 12 core will do better uh, it also is not as thermally constrained as the x 3d part but that doesn't really mean a whole lot because on average, they run very close together in, in terms of temperature. Oh, do the worst ports of 2023? That list might actually look exactly like Digital Foundry's list, because they did a video about that. Um, but yeah, we can talk about that later. We're about to talk about that, actually. You'd rather buy a used 3080 for 400 than a new 4060 Ti. The used 3080 would probably be better at mining. However, the 3080 uses a lot more electricity. When I was at Micro Center, the guy told me 700X because of more cores for streaming. Uh, that's, that's if you want to stream using the CPU. But the thing is, modern day streaming now can be done using the GPU. So the cores, yes, they can help. If you're... If you're going to stream using X264, then the guy at Micro Center is correct. The 7900X would be better in that regard. But if you're streaming using the GPU, which is the way most people do today, unless they have a really old GPU, then it doesn't really matter which CPU you go with for streaming. Like, for example, the stream that I'm doing right now, this stream is being done using the 7900XTX. I'm not using the CPU to do any of the encoding. Even though I have a 16-core CPU, it's not actually being utilized in any extreme capacity for the stream itself. You don't need more cores? Yeah, basically, Matt's saying exactly what I just said. You would only want more cores if you're running more tasks besides the game that would demand the extra cores. VMs, for example, would Yeah, so in general, if you're not if you're if you're not doing a lot of like specialized workloads, so like video editing, uh video transcoding or rendering, uh a lot of like 3D applications. More, stuff more on the development side, like compiler-based tasks, uh, encryption-based workloads. If you're running a lot of virtual machines and you need to break up the CPU in in terms of dedicating virtual cores to the VMs, you know, then the 12 core makes more sense. So in general, for a gaming machine, the 7800X3 is really all you need. You don't really need any other CPU beyond that. But if you're doing more of these specialized workloads where your PC is being used not, not primarily as a gaming machine, but as something more for on the production side or for some other, you know, like I'm saying, specialized workloads, then the 12 core is going to be better. And even the 16 core on top of that would be even better.
I would be running Twitch slash TikTok slash kick at the same time while playing. Yeah, then the 7800X3D is all you really need. For 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 that, yeah. If it's if it's just that, then it's the 7800X3D. Even on 5700X, I can partition enough to run three VMs to still game. Yeah, I, I know. That, that's why I'm saying, like, most people don't really need more than an 8-core CPU. And even the most modern games, for my own testing, they only scale at most up to 8 threads. So, it's typically 4 primary threads and 4 additional threads so that's like eight total so if you have an eight core cpu that's 16 threads so your game potentially can run on half of that cpu's thread count while all the other tasks will be shuffled around the other remaining threads system memory is the bigger concern Yes, it is. And that's that's the main selling point of DDR5, the higher capacity DIMMs. All right, let me go back to... Let me bring this up again. Okay, so... Let's remove the CPU stuff. Okay. My games of 2023. So, the games that I thought were good... Hogwarts Legacy, I like that game. Well, uh, uh, Wolong Fallen Dynasty, I still need to finish this one, but I still I I still think this game was this game was pretty good. I liked it. So if you're somebody who likes action games like Ninja Gaiden, Devil May Cry, uh, Assassin's Creed, well, um, Assassin's Creed mm, kind of like this game. Or from software-based games like Sekiro, you'll probably like this game. This game was actually pretty fun. Although it wasn't as good as their previous game. I always liked Neo 2 more than this. I also liked Neo 2 more than Stranger of Paradise. Stranger of Paradise was their game that they that launched in uh, 2022. So it was the one that came out a year before Wolong. But Wolong was actually really good. Uh, what else? I'm just going through my list here. Resident Evil 4 Remake uh, Fatal Frame Mask of the Lunar Eclipse That was a good one. Um... The Last of Us Part 1 is a good game, but The Last of Us Part 1 is a really, really hard game to run, so I might have that on a different list. Why do I have Dead Island 2 written down here? I never even played that. Honkai Star Rail was really good. Jedi Survivor is like really good stuff okay so star wars jedi survivor this game is the most cpu bottlenecked single player game that came out this year like hands down my latest video looking at nvidia's driver overhead proves that this game at least out of the games that i tested this game has the most Driver overhead, primarily because this game is very CPU bound. Like, I don't know what it is about this one game, but it is so CPU bound. Despite the fact that it's a single player game, it runs like it's a an MMO from like 15 years ago. That's how CPU bound it can get. Forspoken was... To test RAM. Yeah, well, yeah, Forspoken was good. But I don't think it was, like, one of the greats of this year. What else? 
Um, looking through here. I never played Street Fighter 6, but that's a really good game. Final Fantasy 16. Final Fantasy 16 was one of my favorite games of this year. Okay, hold on, hold on. I, I just realized something. This is my, like, my top... Okay, this is going to be my top 10. We'll just stop at 10. Otherwise, this list is going to be way too long. So, okay. So, I got three more that I can choose. Armored Core. Fires of Rubicon. All right, we got two more spots. What is left? Starfield's not on this list. I can tell you that. Although a lot of people were very hateful towards Starfield. I, I personally thought Starfield was an okay game. It's just not... It wasn't really that fun. Uh, okay, I think I know what my last two are going to be. Lies of P... And the very last one, Lords of the Fallen. These are my 10 favorite games of 2023. What's best for Jedi Survivor? Um, any modern CPU. Any modern CPU is good for Jedi Survivor. It doesn't matter what CPU you choose, as long as it's a modern CPU, it's still gonna it's still gonna potentially like fix the problem. Anything older than Zen 4 will show a CPU bottleneck with the NVIDIA GPU. And even with the AMD GPU, it'll still be bottlenecked with by the CPU. Uh, but these are my 10 games. If I had to narrow it down. These are the ones that I recommend for 2023. These are my choices. Baldur's Gate 3 is a really good game, but it's not it's not like my ideal type of game that I personally enjoy playing. So that's why it's not on the list. Same thing with Starfield. Starfield actually was a pretty good game. It's just kind of it was just a little bit boring to me. Yeah, I played I played some of it on the console. I didn't. I don't actually have it on PC, but I did play through some of it, uh, and it was it's it was good. It was good. I, I didn't beat the game, but I played like a good part of the first two chapters of it, and I can tell that it's really good. Now I never played the original Resident Evil Four on the GameCube, so for me, the entire story Resident Evil Four remake is like a, a whole new experience. Because I never played the original game. So I have no idea. Like, I would not know what's around the corner. So, so someone like me going in blind versus somebody who played the original on the GameCube all those years ago. There's going to be different opinions. Because if somebody is playing a remake after already having experienced the game initially in the original edition. They, they have a higher expectation of the game. Because they already have that nostalgia built in to how the old game was, right? Whereas someone like me, who never played the original version of the game, like, to me, it's a brand new experience. So it's going to be very easy for Capcom to win me over and, and convince me that this is a really good game. You asked in the last stream if the 750X3D would boot... In Oris Master out of the box, it did Oris Master. Yeah, well, see that that just assumes that the Oris Master shipped with a newer BIOS. That, and most likely it would, considering that CPU came out back in like February. So, yeah. Having said that, I when I bought a Steel Legend from Micro Center, the Azrock Steel Legend that I installed the 7950X 3D in, it didn't work. It was on a it was on a BIOS from like I think it was October or November of last year. It was a really old BIOS. So and I can't believe it was in the store and it was like on a launch BIOS or like one that was a month after launch. 
So I had to update the BIOS using flashback, and then it was able to work. But this is my list. I think these are the best. These are my personal favorite games. Uh, I guess I'll say my favorite games of 2023. This is the list. That's why you only buy flashback boards. Every single B650 or X670 board has BIOS flashback. That's one of their features. I guess. Like, that's standard equipment. It's not an optional feature anymore. But apparently, seven segment postcode debug displays are optional equipment now. So, well, I'm glad to hear that that worked out of the box. Yeah, the tier list is based off of usability. Because I got a lot of comments. People were saying, well, what about VRM? What about the BIOS itself? The thing is, most of the BIOS options for all the different brands are going to be standardized because of the AMD common BIOS settings under the advanced menu. Now, what will actually be different is how you access those menus. And it's going to be personal preference. So I'm not really going to grade a motherboard on the BIOS when... Someone might prefer MSI's BIOS layout versus another person who thinks that Asus has the best layout. Or someone else might prefer ASRock's sheer lists of endless options of things to set in the BIOS, right? Like, uh, I'm not going to give a grade on that because that's like an opinionated thing versus like, here are the facts. This one has an X4 slot. This one doesn't. This one, This one has, you know, like... US before this one does not you know and like what's the price of two different boards that offer US before well one of them is $500 the other one is $700 so which one needs to be higher on the tier list the one that's cheaper or the one that's more money you know like or is it better to have it optional so it's it's actually pretty hard to make a tier list for motherboards because the motherboards are all so different from each other Yet, at the end of the day, they all do essentially the same thing. But I'm glad that that worked out for you, that that video was helpful. I might do more of that type of content in the future, because I think that's a, that's a relatively convenient format to compare a bunch of hardware all together at the same time. All right, so that's, uh, let's, I guess, move this here. Uh, we will take this. I don't need this anymore, so we'll just delete all of this. Oh, what was that thing Marcella was saying? Someone was saying uh, worse games. Do the worst, oh, worst ports, okay. All right, so this one. Um, Forspoken was bad. Well, was Forspoken really that bad? A lot of people hate on Forspoken, but Forspoken is actually not that bad anymore. It's still really hard to run, but it's not the way it was. They they actually worked on it. It's a lot better now. It has FSR three. You know, I don't I don't want to say Forspoken's the worst. Uh, there was a whole controversy about like Forza versus the way Gran Turismo Seven makes the game like like makes the track look or something, but I can't really delve into that because I never played those games so I can't really comment on that uh, I'm going back through my list here oh one of them that was really notorious was The Last of Us this game was terrible on PC it still is this this game this is the sort of game that is like so poorly optimized 
at launch and even after launch it's still like so hard to run although it looks good and they use a lot of effects and things it, it doesn't have real ray tracing but it still looks really good but it's very very taxing on the hardware Uh, do I really want to include Forspoken? Forspoken's RT doesn't do anything. But Forspoken actually is not the worst. It's just kind of like somewhere in the middle. Forza was scuffed at launch. Don't know now. The Last of Us Part 1 gave me a lot of entertainment and I didn't even buy it. <laughs> yeah, The Last of Us Part 1 had like... Nick Tech was like all over that game when it came out with all the weird graphical bugs. But the graphical bugs only happened if you were on older GPUs or you had GPUs that had like low amounts of VRAM. So, I mean, I personally never saw any of those issues, but I just remember the game was like super hard to run. And for some reason, the game ran so bad on Intel Arc GPUs that I don't even know to this day if they ever actually fixed it. Because it's like, I think like the 6700 XT and the 3060 Ti like outperformed the A770 by like 50% or some ridiculous metric. It was it was like crazy in terms of the performance difference at launch. Um, that one was pretty bad. Star Wars Jedi Survivor, even though Star Wars, Star Wars Jedi Survivor is unique. Because this one, this is one of my favorite games of 2023, yet it is also one of the worst PC ports of 2023. It's the most CPU-bound single-player game that has ever come out in modern history. Unnecessarily so. You know, it's worse than the first game, like Fallen Order. On the arc, it went from running bad to not even booting anymore. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, I don't know about that, but maybe on the A750. Uh, Dead Island 2. Oh, you know what's another one that was really bad? I didn't even play this one. Redfall. Redfall was bad. Redfall was really bad. Dead Island 2 keeps showing up in my list, but I don't think Dead Island 2 was that bad. As a PC port, I think it was fine. Um, Baldur's Gate was primarily PC Ratchet and Clank PC port was really good that was probably one of the best ones uh, oh another game another game that was terrible at launch was Lords of the Fallen this game is actually Hmm, if I have to choose, like, one game out of my entire favorite list, Lords of the Fall might be number one. Lords of the Fall might actually be number one. Lords of the Fall came out, and it was so good. Like, I, I put, like, how many hours do I have in that game? Let me see. 129 hours. I put 129 hours into Lords of the Fallen in like the first month that that game came out. That game was good. But it was so bad at launch. Like Lords of the Fallen had very, very bad problems at launch. We're talking like your save file could get corrupted and then get up, then get uh, like saved into Steam. And corrupt your Steam cloud save. So you had to basically... You basically lost all of your progress. Like we're talking like very, very serious game breaking bugs. That force you to lose your entire... Like if you had 50 hours of playtime logged. And your save file got corrupted. There was no way for you to even know. Until you exit the game. And the next time you try to go back into the game... The file is corrupted and you cannot get it back because it's synced to the Steam Cloud. So unless you took a backup manually, like after that play session, although I don't even know if that could save it because it's like as you exit the game, it gets corrupted. 
So it was that was pretty terrible. Now, thankfully for me, I never ran into that problem, but Steam forums were loaded with this with so many threads of corrupted save files in Lords of the Fallen. Like it was very rampant. Uh, on top of that, the game had like a lot of crashing issues. Like it would crash for all kinds of random reasons that were really unknown. Like you guys saw I stream the game. It never crashed for me. And I was playing, but see, I was playing on a new computer, so I have no idea. Because I was playing the game on a uh, 7900 XTX at launch. I did like a four hour live stream. I did like another live stream on the 4090, and the game never crashed for me once. So I never experienced these problems. But people on older hardware, particularly RTX 30 series, uh, RDNA 2, so that's like 6000 series, and then like older GPUs, like Pascal 10 series, and those sort of things. They were like crashing intermittently and they could never figure out what was causing it. So people were like doing workarounds, like run everything on low settings, um, you know, turn turn off whatever shader, shadows or something, whatever it was. So I don't know. I, I, I guess they fixed it by now because the game has been out for months now. But all things being equal, I think Lords of the Fall was my favorite game. Like in terms of... When, when the game from the time the game came out to how many hours I put into the game Lords of the Fall is probably like number one for me uh, for sure like the only other one that would probably rival that would be Final Fantasy 16 and Honkai Star Rail and then after that probably Fatal Frame and Resident Evil and the rest of them were not as interesting like uh, Lies of P also actually I take that back Lies of P would probably be number two or three. Because Liza P, I was really hyped for that game. And it came out and it delivered. Liza P came out. It was very well optimized. It ran great. It was UE4. But it did not have the stutters that UE4 is known for. Because they pre-compiled stuff on the first uh, load. So, very well made game. Great soundtrack. Basically everything. Great action. Probably the the best most refined souls like game that i've ever played and i think a lot of reviewers would agree with me with that conclusion but yeah in terms of enjoyment though i actually found lords of the fallen more fun even as scuffed as that game was at launch i found lords of the fallen way more fun than liza p maybe it was because it had multiplayer because it had pvp it, although PvP was kind of broken, like I, I, I griefed a lot of players and I felt bad for them. And then I just kind of like quit the game altogether uh, after I did like two different... I, I, got, I, I got like two different endings. I got the bad ending, I got the good ending. Uh, there's technically a third ending, which I haven't gotten, but I'm like, eh. At this point, I've pretty much seen all the content. So, kind of done with the game at this point. But I did co-op. Co-op in, in Lords of the Fallen is the best experience for a Souls-like game. Period. Like, there's no... Like, From Software's multiplayer is nothing compared to Lords of the Fallen. Lords of the Fallen, the fact that you can co-op with somebody and both of you can progress through the entire game together, although the host is the one that actually makes the progress, the guests will have to then do the same exact content over again. So, I mean, that, that kind of plays into replayability, so I understand why they do it that way. But the fact that you can do that, and you can never do that in a Souls game, like you can't do it in Dark Souls, you can't do it in Elden Ring, I mean, it's it's kind of a new thing for the genre. So, I mean, the only other game that did that was uh, uh, Neo 2 had that, and I think the other games from Team Ninja do that. I Wolong's Wolong has PvP, which is kind of a joke, because everyone's just jumping and flipping and trying to like slash at each other the whole time and parry each other. But Wolong, I don't think it has expedition mode, so I don't think you can play the whole game together with a friend or two. I have to look into that again. I know you can group up with other people though; it has co-op. But yeah, Lords of the Fallen, man, that game is that that was a. That was a nice surprise. I, I wasn't expecting that game to be as good as it was, despite all the issues at launch. 
It was still probably the most fun out of all the games I played this year. Lords of the Fallen was number one, for sure. And that's saying a lot, because that's coming from a studio that's that doesn't have a lot of games under their belt. Like, there's not a lot there when you go look them up. So that developer and the publisher, you know, they're not a, they're kind of a small name. Much better than the 2024 one, pro. Oh yeah, it's way better than the one. I never played the 2020, the 2014 one, but I watched videos about that one, and I watched a couple of the old like IGN review of it, and uh, yeah, I could already tell like the old one, like the 2014 game had this kind of like World of Warcraft look. It was like a cartoony look, but it was like, it ran horribly. You could tell by looking at it. You, Nah, this game is way better than the original. Like, miles ahead. This game, Lords of the Fallen 2023, is actually like a sequel. Because the game takes place after the first game. So I don't understand why they didn't just call the name. I don't know why they didn't just call it Lords of the Fallen 2. They could have easily called it Lords of the Fallen 2. In fact, if you browse to the game files in Steam where the game is installed, the folder for the game is literally L-O-T-F-2. So it's, it's literally Lords of the Fallen 2 as far as the game in st install fo folder. So the directory is Lords of the Fallen 2. So I don't know why they didn't just call the name Lords of the Fallen 2 officially. So that, to me, was kind of weird. Uh, but they're doing the Call of Duty thing, I guess. Well, I, th I think they should just call it Lords of the Fallen 2. That's, that's what I would have done if I was in charge of the name. Considering, especially if you know the endings of the game. Like, the game actually is... It is heavily linked to the lore and the story of the first game. It doesn't look anything like the first game. It doesn't play anything like the first game. But the lore-wise and story-wise, it is a direct sequel. The, the hero from the first game is literally a main NPC. A major NPC in this Lords of the Fallen was the main protagonist from the first game. And the main deity that you fight or you try to d defeat for the good ending was the main villain the main deity that you had to kill in the first game so it's like they reuse the same lore it's all like a, a linked universe although they expand upon it because they introduce like umbral and all this other stuff like the dual world system that's all new but the things from the first game the events of the first game they all carry over so and I kind of like that, because I think the game has some pretty good lore. It's not nearly as deep as, uh, like, a From Software game, but it, it is pretty good. Definitely more lore than, like, Lies of P. Yeah, I guess these are the ones that stand out in my mind. Some people might say Forspoken. Maybe I guess we'll include Forspoken. As bad on PC, although I don't really, I don't know. Like today, this game actually runs pretty good. After all the updates. So it's, it's like, Square Enix got so many complaints. That they went back to the dev, the whoever developed this game. I think Luminous Studio or whoever did it. And they're like, hey, too many people are complaining. You need to fix this. Even though it was kind of a failed project. We got to do something here. So they actually fixed it. It actually runs pretty much the same as Final Fantasy 15. It's a little bit harder to run than Final Fantasy 15, especially if you max out the RT. As soon as you max out RT, it loses a lot of performance for no visual gain. So, but yeah, that's basically the worst, I guess the five worst PC ports of 2023. All right, I guess I don't have any other topics on hand, so if anybody in the chat wants to list their favorite games of 2023, 
I'd be interested to know if any game overlaps with my list or what games may have been on your list that were not on my list. So I might check those out if those are like on some kind of sale or something. Maybe. As long as it's not like Redfall or, you know, like Call of Duty or something like those. I don't know. Oh, I recently watched the Halo TV series. Paramount Plus. I guess it was. it's like free on like Amazon Prime Instant Video until the end of the year. So I, I binge watched Halo, and I thought it was pretty good. A lot of people, a lot of reviews say it was bad. I don't know why. <laughs> I, I thought it was okay. I would say it's like a three and a half out of five. Maybe uh, on a 10 scale, I'd probably give it like a 7.5. I do think the first few episodes... The first half of the Halo TV series was definitely better than the back half of the series. Oh, RK watched it too? Yeah, I watched the last two episodes earlier today. Because I had to finish like uh, episode 8 and 9. Yeah, I thought... Once, once they introduce... Okay, this is kind of spoilers for those that want to watch it, but once they introduce that other chosen one that can speak the language of the aliens, I kind of started disliking the show because it just kind of, I don't know, it, it didn't really line up much with the uh, the games, I guess, although I didn't really play the modern games. Like, I haven't played Halo Infinite story, and I haven't played Halo 3's story. So I only know the story from, like, Halo 1 and Halo 2. And I haven't played Halo 1 and 2 in so long that my memory of those games is kind of hazy. So, but yeah, like, I don't know. I thought Halo TV series was pretty good. The Halo show took some time. It was announced way back in the Xbox One launch. Oh, wow, really? Ten years ago? Xbox One launched a decade ago. But that TV show came out, I, I want to say it was twenty like, like 2022. So almost two years ago. But there's a new season coming out, like, in a couple of weeks. <laughs> Actually, like, February 4th or February 8th or something is the start of the next Halo, like, season 2. So, uh, I don't know. I thought it was an okay show. I, I really liked the first few episodes of it. Like, episode one was really good. Episode two, I, I forget which episode Master Chief, like, takes off his helmet. I think it's, like, the third episode or the very end of the second. No, I forget. It's somewhere in there. Um, but I was, I, I went in blind. And I'm not someone who's, like, a hardcore Halo fan. Like I said earlier, I've only played like Halo 1 and Halo 2. I think I played a little bit of Halo ODST at a friend's house, like on a 360, like a long time ago. So, uh, and, and the, the most recent Halo that I've played is like multiplayer, like uh, Deathmatch on uh, Halo Infinite. So I, I have no idea what the story is in the Halo Infinite campaign. Yeah, no, I mean, it literally says it, uh, I think, uh, off, after the credits were rolling in, like, the last episode. To be fair, it's its own universe, not based on the games. Oh, really? I thought it was based off of the games. Well, I know the games are based off of the books, because there are books, aren't there? I thought there were novels. Marcelo said, like, a dragon is pretty good. Oh, yeah, see, I like the Yakuza games, but I, I haven't really... The Yakuza games are ones where it's like, I'll get them when they're like on a Steam sale at like 80, 85% off. And then I'll play like, I'll play them for like 45 minutes and I'll never touch them again. Like that, that's my experience with the Yakuza series. So it's like, eh, they're good games. They're really good games, but they're, they're like heavy time sinks, you know, like, uh, I'd have to be really, really into those games to be able to put the kind of hours that I'm able to put into Lords of the Fallen 
into one of those. Oh, books came after the games. Okay. So really the games were the origin of the Halo franchise. That's your experience with Final Fantasy? Yeah, no. It's like, see, for me, like, I like the Final Fantasy series. I'm going to play through the entire Final Fantasy game. Like, you guys can expect... So, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is the next big game that you can expect to see me live streaming on the channel. Like, off the regular stream. So, not on this type of stream. Not, not the weekly Thursday stream. But, like, if I do a Saturday stream or something, once Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is out, you can rest assured it's going to be Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Like, that's the game that I'm going to be streaming a lot once it comes out. And I'll probably do some Tekken 8 content as well. I mean, we already kind of covered Tekken 8, but that was the demo. I do want to show the full game on PC when it comes out. So, and that's in a few weeks from now. It's about a month from now. Give or take. And then a month after that is going to be Final Fantasy. So we got two months to Final Fantasy and one month to Tekken 8. People that like the Halo TV show or people that didn't play Halo multiplayer online back in 2002-2010. Well, the first episode... The first episode... The way that they do... they Okay. They try to do the multiplayer look like the actual game combat the way it looks sort of uh, where they go like first person mode and they show the the heads up display but it has such a it just it's so jarring from the actual show itself that it's like you can tell it's all cgi you know what i'm saying so and it's eh, they're trying to play homage to the game when they do those scenes the battle scenes especially in the first episode when they introduce the spartans and the last episode where they're fighting the covenant at the very end trying to get the uh the artifacts have you seen dragon's dogma 2 yes i have and i need to know when that game's coming out because that is a game that went from like not on my radar to like definitely on the radar <laughs> let me look it up real quick Okay, Dragon's Dogma 2. Hold on, let me, let me find the thing. Uh, I think it's like March, right? March 22nd. Here it is. Dragon's Dogma 2. Alright, I gotta put this on my calendar. March 22nd. So that one is... Looks like it's one, two, three weeks after Final Fantasy 7. So that should give me ample time. Dragon's Dogma 2. Okay, I'm tracking that one now. The other one is... Uh, Grand Blue Fantasy. Grand Blue Fantasy Relink. Oh wait, this game's coming in January? This game is coming out in January? Okay, this is another one that I'm tracking. Well, I'm supposed to be tracking. January 29th. Okay, so that's actually... That one is going to overlap with Tekken 8. Grand Blue Fantasy Relink. I'm putting these down. So expect to see Grand Blue Fantasy Relink on stream, Tekken 8 on stream, Final Fantasy 7, and Dragon's Dogma 2. These are the four major games that... Uh, I can guarantee that I will be covering at launch <clears throat> for each of these. And a lot of the hate comes from him taking off his helmet. Yeah, but see the thing? Okay, a lot of people like to argue about the taking off the helmet. And they always... I'm going to play devil's advocate here. And 
I'm gonna say that it's. I feel like if you had Master Chief wear his helmet all the time, it's hard to it's hard to to kind of convey the emotion. You know what I mean? Like after he starts being able to think for himself and feel emotions and all this stuff around him. Like, it's kind of hard to tell the story with his mask on all the time. A lot of people like to bring up Mandalorian because Mando never takes off his mask. Or he, like, almost never does, right? Like, if Mando takes his mask off, it's like a really, really big deal. It has impact. And I feel like the people who played the video games... They wanted the TV show to be just like Mandalorian, where if Master Chief takes off his his helmet, it's a really big deal. It's supposed to have a lot of impact. So I totally understand their argument there. Master Chief isn't supposed to show emotion or relate to the audience. Yeah, but and he and that's exactly how he was in the beginning. Right until they did that thing, and he took the thing out of his back, the what do they call it, the pellet that suppresses his emotions. Once he removed that, then it's like, what's the point of him wearing the mask all the time? Because it's like, you're still gonna be able to tell the difference in the way he behaves. Because if you remember, there's another Spartan. I don't want to give too many spoilers away for those that have not watched the show, but let's just say there's another Spartan. In his, in, in, uh, what is it? Silver, the silver, what is their unit called? It's like silver something or whatever. There's another Spartan who also removes the pellet and begins to feel emotions as well. And there's a lot of scenes, in particular, there's a battle sequence. I think it's episode, uh, six, if I remember correctly, where there's a big battle. For the, lo for the second artifact. And there's a lot of scenes where the second Spartan has the mask on. But yet that Spartan also can feel emotion. And you can see the difference in the way that Spartan acts. Like the way that she walks. And like just the, the like she's way more animated than the other Spartans that still have their emotions suppressed. So, I mean, those guys are very, like, you know, cut and dry, very machine-like in their behavior, in their mannerisms. Like, it's all about the mission. You know, they're always going to be following orders, etc. So, um, yeah, a lot of people didn't really jive with that whole narrative. But I don't know. I kind of thought it was an okay show. Like, I didn't really have a problem with it. But again, I'm not... I, I'm probably not the primary audience because I'm not a huge Halo person so I can understand why a lot of people who are really into Halo didn't like the show none of that TV show is accurate to the books or movies were they trying to be accurate though the other show that a lot of people like to bring up and hate on is the uh, what is it called the Rings of Power the story about uh, Galadriel from Lord of the Rings. A lot of people hate on that series. I think a lot more people that are into Lord of the Rings dislike the Rings of Power more than the people who like Halo disliked the Halo TV series. Like, if you were to do the ratio, <laughs> I think way more Lord of the, fan Lord of the Rings people hate uh, the Rings of Power. But... See, I like Lord of the Rings. I, I know way more about Lord of the Rings than I know about Halo. But even after watching The Rings of Power, I I also thought The Rings of Power were, was okay. I didn't think it was that good. But I would still say it's like a 7 out of 10. And the Halo show, I would also say is about a 7 out of 10. So, I don't know. Like Maybe I'm an easy grader when it comes to TV series based off of alternate media either games or movies or books but i don't know i, th I thought they were okay the one thing i didn't understand in the halo show was the story arc about the girl on the desert planet you guys know what i'm talking about uh quan 
Quan's story, I did not understand what is the purpose of this story arc. Like, because keep in mind, my knowledge of Halo is literally Halo 1 and Halo 2. I don't know any other Halo story beyond Halo 2. So I I recognize Covenant. I recognize the artifacts. I recognize Cortana, uh, Master Chief. The difference between the Spartans and the non and the regular Marines, you know, I get all of that. But this whole thing about Quan and that one guy who was trained to be a Spartan, but he escaped and like abandoned the program, and like I didn't understand that. What's the purpose of that story arc? Like, there's a parallel story arc in addition to Master Chief's story. There's like this other story going on on the side. It even got its own dedicated episode. Episode 7 was literally all about Quan's story arc. It had nothing to do with Master Chief. And I was like, mm, this must be something from Halo, like, Reach or ODST or, or something. I, I was thinking like, man, these guys, these characters must be in like a newer Halo game that I don't know anything about because I never played like Halo 4 or Halo 3 or all through Halo ODST. Although Halo ODST, I think, was more like the squad. So I think I understood where they got the other Spartan characters from. I thought it was all based off of Halo ODST. But see, this this shows you the mind of someone who doesn't really know the Halo story. So going in with my understanding of Halo, like you can see how someone like me would think, oh, the show was pretty good. I mean, it was an okay show. Like I didn't I didn't understand what Quan's purpose was in the show, but it's like my assumption was like it must be she's in like a different video game that I never played. You know, like whatever the people that hate the tv series are the halo fans <laughs> okay so everybody else who's not a halo fan thought it was good then okay yeah dragon's dogma what do you guys think what 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 game do you think is going to win game of the year 2024 let's see if we can call it right now you had 10 years to play all the games <laughs> yeah yeah well, I mean, I had like 10 years to play all the Call of Duty games, and the, the last Call of Duty game I played was like Modern Warfare 2. Like, the original Modern Warfare 2. Not the not the remake, the original. Actually, was Black Ops after... I think it, I think it was Modern Warfare 1, Black Ops, Modern Warfare 2. Yeah, I think Modern Warfare 2 was the last one I played. Which would have been like... 2011 or something. I don't forgot when that was. It was like a long time ago. Days of Defeat was where it's at. What heavy hitters are coming in 2024? I only know this game. That one, Avowed. I don't even know what Avowed is. Star Citizen, have you seen the dev walkthrough? Looks amazing. Wait, Star Citizen is coming out next year? <laughs> is that for real or is that the most like fake news i've ever heard <laughs> star citizen for real is coming out next year like legit is it really coming out is there a release date hold on star citizen <laughs> what first release december 31st of 20 16 that's not true that's fake it's still not out dragon's dogma has a pretty good shot at, yeah i think so too i mean because if okay dragon's dogma is gonna be like Baldur's gate 3 only different combat system and i guess no dice roll <laughs> so it's like a different system but it's gonna be very similar in terms of like player like npc interactions and stuff the way the quest structures are set up Star Citizen release date, February 30th. Really? Is this for real? Is this really coming out?
I don't think... Okay, if it comes out, it's it's not going to win Game of the Year. <laughs> I don't care if it comes out. It's not going to win Game of the Year. Like, the game... Have you guys played... How many people in the chat have actually played Star Citizen? Like, or ha have actually seen real gameplay footage of it? Because I've played it. Because they'll do, like, these freebie weekend things where you can log in. And, and without having have pledged anything. And so I've played it, and it is very tedious. It it's okay. Let's let's put it this way. It's like it's it's kind of like No Man's Sky and Starfield except way more tedious. The 30th February doesn't even, Oh yeah, you're right. <laughs> well, I thought you meant the 29th. Yeah, you got me. Man, you got me because I was so excited about like, the fact that it might actually be a legitimate game for once instead of some alpha release that never comes out. Sounds like Game of the Year to me. Really? If a game is like No Man's Sky and Starfield combined, it becomes Game of the Year material? How? <laughs> it's it's way more tedious. Like, you, if you want to put on your spacesuit, like, all the menuing is so complicated... It's like you go out, you get out of your apartment, you go down the elevator, you run over to the spaceport, or you take you take the train, or the shuttle to the spaceport. Then you got to go get your ship. You have to load. You have to like call your ship, or I guess you have to like book a docking. Uh, you have to reserve like a a spaceport where they will load your ship. So you can go to that docking bay and then get on your ship and then take off. And don't don't get me started on how to fly the ship. Flying a ship in Starfield, a spaceship, is literally... It's like playing Microsoft Flight Simulator. Only you're in outer space. Like the amount of things that you have to manage your... Uh, the, not the nautical. What do they call that thing? It's like the altitude thing and the space one. It's like all the different... like. The thruster systems and stuff. It's crazy. It's like so involved that when I was playing it, I was thinking, yeah, they're going, they're trying to go for like a space simulator with this. And the average gamer isn't going to enjoy this. It's way too complicated. Like there's no way to fast travel. There's, there's literally no fast travel. You can't like, okay, if you, let's say you get in your ship. And then you fly through hyperspace. You go light speed and you go, you know, like Han Solo, Millennium Falcon. You like blast off, go to some other planet. It takes you like 20 minutes to get from the spaceport to the final destination that you're trying to go to. Then you realize you forgot something on the previous planet. You cannot fast travel back. You have to get into your ship, do all that flying again... And it's, it's like they're going for ultra realism. And I don't know, man. It's like, you already do all this stuff in the real world. Like, if you got to drive to your office and do your job and all this stuff, you, and you got to, you forget, you drive home, you forget something in the office, you got to go back or leave it there. You know, like that kind of thing. You can't just like fast travel in real life back to the office and fast travel back. It's like, nope, you got to go through all the steps. Star Citizen is exactly the same way. You have to go through all the steps of being in transit in outer space. And it's fun for like the first few times of doing it. But then it becomes very repetitive and tedious. It's like not fun. People already don't like Elite Dangerous. Star Citizen has even less that enjoy it. People love Dark Souls and that's a PETA, so why not Star Citizen? Um, no, it's, nah, that's, that's different, that's different. Dar so Dark Souls is not, Dark Souls is not tedious in the way that Starfield's tedious. So like Dark Souls, okay, here's the thing about Dark Souls that people who, who aren't very experienced in the Souls games don't know. Like in Dark Souls... Like, you can literally just run past everything. Like, here's the thing about Dark Souls. In Dark Souls, you can play Dark Souls 
like it's a Mario or a Legend of Zelda game. But a lot of people don't realize that. If you want... Look, okay, in Mario, you know how you can, like, jump and, like, leap past all the enemies or kill the enemies on the way? Dark Souls is the same way. You can either choose to fight the enemies on the way to the boss. Or you can avoid all of them and run past everything and just go straight to the boss. You could do it. You don't have to fight everything. And a lot of people forget that or don't know that you literally don't have to fight everything in your path to the boss. But that's the, that's the thing about Japanese game design. Like, it's all designed the same way. Like, if you don't want to fight anything, you don't have to. Just run past everything. Avoid everything. Now, yeah, you're not going to get experience by not fighting anything. You're not going to gain the experience points. You're not going to be leveling up as fast. But as soon as you kill the boss, easier said than done, you get a whole bunch of experience. So the difference is, like, if I, if I kill every enemy and then go fight the boss, I'll level up probably like two times on the way to the boss, then I'll level up like two more times after killing the boss, that's four levels, versus if I skip everything, fight the boss, I'll level up like three times after I kill the boss. So I'm like slightly under-leveled versus if I fought everything on the way. See what I mean? So, so it's different. Star Citizen is kind of... Uh, well, you can quit your job to play Star Citizen. You can work inside Star Citizen. Yeah, I mean, you could do that. <laughs> I mean, you could. I mean... Uh, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> like, if you, if you like living in a simulation... <laughs> if you like living in a simulation, you, you, you can just quit your job and just... Or bring your job into Star Citizen and just exist there, you know? Like, yeah... Just live inside the simulation. Because that's what they're going for. Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, in Star Citizen, you have to drink water. You have to periodically eat food. You cannot just not eat any food and expect to stay alive. It doesn't work that way in Star Citizen. In Dark Souls, if I don't eat any food, nobody cares because my character will never die. My character can literally stand forever and never have to sit down. Like, I can literally leave the game on, go be AFK for, like, five hours, and the character will still be standing there idly as though nothing went wrong. Meanwhile, in Star Citizen, if I go AFK and my character is standing up the whole time, they're going to start becoming fatigued, they're going to tire out, they're going to need water, they're going to get hungry, and they're going to die if I'm gone for, like, I don't know, 24 hours or something, and they never get food or anything, you know what I mean? Like... It's, they're going for, like, real realism there. They're going for, like, a simulation. Wait, you're saying it won't be Game of the Year due to mainstream popularity, not necessarily because of quality? Obviously, subjectively speculative, just clarification. Yes, I'm saying, I'm saying that Star Citizen cannot win Game of the Year because the vast majority of people who play games, including people who also review games have a low tolerance for tedious, mundane activities. Like, putting on clothes, uh, taking a train to the spaceport, piloting the spaceship from one planet to another. Like, doing that over and over again, that's not what they consider fun. Like, there's, there's not much combat, you know, there's not much action. It's just kind of like... Walking around in a regular world and you go to the restaurant, you go to your, you know, like your, your apartment or whatever. I, I guess there's in-game housing, I, I guess. So. Realize you're making points for it being game of the year, right? I am. Like those sort of things are going to be considered game of the year. <laughs> That's game of the year uh, quality right there. <laughs> like getting on a train and going to the spaceport. <laughs> you can do that in Starfield though. Like Starfield has that. The only difference is Starfield has fast travel. <laughs> and Starfield didn't win game of the year. And Starfield probably has a better story than Star Citizen. Star Citizen will not win game of the year because we will all be dead by then. <laughs> yeah, actually you have a point there. I was thinking about that. Like, Star Citizen might never see an official release 
in our lifetime, there is a very high chance, there's a high probability that that actually is a true statement. Star Citizen will not win Game of the Year because we will all be dead by then. Yeah, I mean, it could. It could It could just perpetually exist as an alpha release product. In alpha phase. But yeah, in all seriousness, I think out of all the games that I've seen, like... Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, Dragon's Dogma 2, those are two games that I think have a chance at being Game of the Year. Final Fantasy VII, I don't... If I had to pick one over the other, I think Dragon's Dogma 2 has a better chance of being Game of the Year because I feel like it's going to feel like a more original experience. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is just basically taking Final F Fantasy VII Remake and just going open world with it. And it's a story that a lot of people already know. So it's it's going to run into the same problem that Resident Evil 4 remake ran into. Because Resident Evil 4 is a remake of an old game. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is a remake of an old game. So I think that's going to be the limiting factor there. Check Avowed. Avowed. This? Whoa, turn that down a little bit. Is this gonna have- is this copyrighted music? Is this copyrighted music? I just mute it. Let me see. Alright, let me see. Is this good? Obsidian Entertainment. 20 years of making your worlds your way. Okay, this is in-game footage. Oh wait, you know what? I think I have seen a trailer of this before. Is this supposed to be some VR game? People don't like you very much, do they? Sent here to the living lands. By Are they going for like World of Warcraft 2 or something? Like what is this supposed to be? Or Skyrim 2? Wait, he's got dual pistols? To investigate some play. Hold on, hold on. I don't want to get copyright striked with this music. I don't know if that music is safe or not. So let me see. So, okay, that looks very Skyrim, sort of. What happened? Is it... Oh, wait, it's still going. This is by the people who did Dead Pillars of Eternity, Dead Fire? Secrets you keep. You're either here to save us. This looks a lot like Immortals of Avium in terms to of the combat. Us. The magic combat. Man, this looks very like Blizzard Entertainment in a way. But now that you Only have like lower power. budget. What are you gonna do with it? Why does that bear have, like, fungal spores growing on its fur? Avowed. What is this coming out? Does it have a release date? Okay, it just says coming in 2024, so we don't actually know. Okay. I mean, it looks cool. I don't know. It's first person, so that already kind of hurts it for me. Because I, I definitely prefer... Like, if it's an action game with, like, spellcasting and knights and armor and that kind of stuff, I definitely prefer third-person view over first-person view. That's the reason... That's one of the main reasons why I like the Souls games so much more than Skyrim.
Okay, I mean, there's like a bunch of other, uh, like there's like a bunch of Korean MMOs that are supposed to come out next year, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, you know what's also coming out next year? I just remembered. Why didn't I think of this earlier? Final Fantasy 14 Dawn, Dawn, Dawn Trail. Yeah, this game. This game is coming out. Uh, I forgot. When is it coming out? It just says summer. Okay. So there's this, and then there's, like, Avowed. But there's all these other MMOs that are coming out, like, from Korea. There's, like, a bunch of Korean... I forgot, like, Throne... Throne of Liberty? Throne and Liberty or something? Like, uh... Throne and Liberty? This one? Yeah, this game, Throne and Liberty. Watch trailer. Hold on, let's see. Please don't have copyright music. Oh, 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 oh NC Soft, NC Soft. Star has shattered. NC Soft and Amazon Games. It's That's not a good thing. I mean, okay, NC Soft is fine, but Amazon, no. An ancient evil. Ancient evil. Lost fragments. Throne and Liberty. In their path. You must find them. Like all Korean MMOs, they're over the top action, and it's all the visual flash and no actual substance. <laughs> like it's all about the looks, and it's like you get into the actual game, it looks so good in the trailers, and then the game is a big nothing burger. That's usually what ends up happening. I mean, I'm not alone in saying this. I'm not trying to, like, say something, like, bad about Korean game studios. I'm just saying, like, from my personal experience, Korean MMOs are, like, they look so cool. They're, like, all flashy. But then it's, like... See, this looks, this looks cool. This, to me, already looks cooler than a vow. Prove your strength. Like, th this looks cool. You got wolves, you got druids flying in the air and you turn into a bird. You can literally fly around as a bird. Like, I don't think any other game has done that. They basically stole that from, like, Warcraft 3. From Medivh. <laughs> Everybody's Medivh in, in Throne and Liberty. <laughs> oh, man. See, that's what I'm talking about right there, though. The, these type of games, like, they look so good on paper and in the trailers, and then you get in, and it's like, there's nothing to do. <laughs> oh, man. This one, I think, is coming out next year. It says coming soon. So, but I would assume it's next year. So it looks let me like this is cool. What are the minimum PC specs? What are the recommended specs? Okay, the recommended specs for Throne and Liberty is Intel eleventh generation i five. So that'll be like a Ryzen fifty six hundred X, and then an RTX twenty seventy Super, and sixteen gigabytes of RAM and Windows ten. You know, whatever. What are the minimum? The minimum is a Cabby Lake i5 and a GTX 1660. And again, 16 gigabytes of RAM. So, uh... Yeah, this one looks like it could be cool, though. Although, I don't know. It's, it's weird how MMOs, like, there's no real good MMO besides World of Warcraft and Final Fantasy XIV. Like, it, it's bizarre to me that there hasn't been a single game... I guess maybe Guild Wars 2, sort of, but not really. Like, there's not... There hasn't been a really good MMO that has been... I guess some people might bring up New World. New World, to me, is very boring. So, it's kind of... It's not a Korean MMO, but it's also boring. At least the Korean MMOs have style. They look flashy. The combat looks so flashy... But, it's, but there's, like, no essence in the game. It's like a game that has a lot of really good looks, but it lacks substance. It lacks the soul of an actual game. 
Maybe it will have third. Oh, you mean avowed? It would use Unreal Engine 5 and stutter like a brick inside a blender. <laughs> RuneScape. RuneScape. Mm. Nah, RuneScape is just not even like that. That's a different generation of MMO. That's the only problem with RuneScape. It's just like, eh, no. Yeah, well, that's pretty much all I had for this stream. It'll be interesting to see what comes out, like, going past March, because I don't have any games on my list after Dragon's Dogma 2. That's the only one. I don't have anything on the list. Oh, I guess Final Fantasy XIV Dawn Trail. Yeah, I will, I will play that. I think. There's a high probability that I will return to Final Fantasy XIV when the new expansion comes out. Wukong, when is that coming out? I don't even know when that's coming out. Wukong, Black Myth Wukong. Does this even have a release date? Oh yeah, it does. August 20th, 2024. Um, This one, I'm not 100% like set on yet. Because... This, this is the sort of game that I need to see more gameplay footage of it if, in order for me to actually buy it day one. So, uh, we'll see. Primarily because I don't know anything about the developer. So, I don't know... I don't know much about it. It looks promising, though. Uh, there is a game from Team Ninja that's coming out next year. What is it? Ronin? Rise of the Ronin? Rise of the Ronin. Yeah, this one. Oh, this is March. Oh, wow. This one's also March. Huh. So this game... This game is March 22nd. Another game coming out in March. March... Oh, that's the same day that Dragon's Dogma. Yeah, so this game comes out the same exact day as... Uh, Dragon's Dogma 2. To be honest, guys, I'm more interested in this game than the Wukong game. Wukong looks like it's got way better graphics. Because it's made by a Chinese studio. Which is open to leveraging newer technology. Versus Rise of the Ronin, which I think this game... Yeah, this game is using probably the Katana engine, if I had to guess. Wait, what? Still, okay, so... I think this game is... Is this Team Ninja? Who's making this game? No, this is... Sun Wait, who's the... Oh, Team Ninja. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this game, I don't know what's the engine... Engine. It doesn't say in the article. Rise of the Ronin actually is one of those that might be like the next kind of like Lies of P sort of game for me. Because I'm not really expecting it. I don't have very high expectations. But it could be a really good game. And the main reason why I don't have high expectations for it is because if you guys look at Team Ninja's track record. Team Ninja put out... Uh, Neo 2 in 2020, it was great, it was on console only, then a year later, in 2021, it came to PC, it was great, uh, then they put out, uh, Stranger Paradise Final Fantasy Origin in 2022, that game was okay, but it was not that great, then they put out this year, Wolong Fallen Dynasty, which was, again, okay, but not great, I feel like every... Every release from Team Ninja that has come out since Neo 2 has continued to do worse than the previous title. Which means if Neo 2 was a 9, Final Fantasy Origins was an 8. And Wolong is at best an 8 or maybe like a 7. So Rise of the Ronin is their next game. And they always launch their games in March. 
It's always March. You look up when Neo 2 came out. Uh, let's see. Just go to, like, Team Ninja. Look at, uh, here. Where's, um, like, check it out. Neo 2. Neo, oh, Stranger Paradise, Wolong. All right, let's see when these came, games came out. Neo 2, March 2020. See? Stranger of Paradise. Oh, this one's going to be, I think, yeah, March 18th, 2022. See? And then Wolong, March of this year, March 3rd of this year. So they always launch their games in March. So it's no surprise that Rise of the Ronin, March 22nd, so, uh, and they've always done worse. Like, this game was the best one. This game was worse by a significant margin. And this game was even worse than Final Fantasy by a small amount. So, it's like they've gotten worse with each game. So, I don't have very high expectations for Rise of the Ronin. But this game could be really good. This game is being published by Sony. So, it's supposed to be a timed exclusive, I guess. Yeah, so this is only going to be PS5. So this one will not be on PC, but I, I might actually... Yeah, let me put that one down. Okay, Rise of the Ronin. But the problem is this game comes out the same day as Dragon's Dogma 2. And I think I'm going to be playing Dragon's Dogma 2 more than this game. Considering what I just said about Team Ninja's track record. Are you going to join the VC at the... Uh, yeah, um... Yeah, I could probably join for a little bit here. Rise of the Ronin will reset it and be an 11 out of 10. I hope so. I really, really hope so. Uh, the game, the, the trailer looks really good. Oh, the Metal Gear Solid 3 remake? Oh, there is a Metal Gear Solid 3 remake? See, that's another remake, though. Man, there's, like, too many remakes. This is what I said in the... Like, if you guys watched me while I was playing Star... Or Honkai Star Rail the other day, I said how Chinese... I feel like all the new franchises are coming out of Chinese developers. Like, I feel like Japanese and Western developers are just rehashing franchises over and over again. You see a lot of remakes, remasters coming out of the Japanese studios. And then you see like with Western studios, there's a lot of there's a lot of like sequels. You know, look at uh look at the um well look at Call of Duty. Like that's the best example I can give you. Right? Like everything's a sequel now. So where's all the new original things? Like Team Ninja is putting out original things, Rise of the Ronin's original. So hopefully this is good. Wolong was sort of original, but not really, because it was literally just Dynasty Warriors, which is the sister. So Omega Force does Dynasty Warriors, and Team Ninja does like Ninja Gaiden and Neo. So it's like, oh, they took, they basically borrowed the Dynasty Warriors characters from Omega Force and then like put them in a Souls-like game, and that's what this game is. So it's like, they don't really have a track record of original stuff. But this is an example of an original game from a, like a well-known studio. Stranger Paradise. This is basically a re, it's like a reimagining of Final Fantasy 1. But it's very, uh, it's just basically Neo. Only instead of ninjas and samurai, it's Final Fantasy Jobs. So, uh, I actually kind of like this game. I like this more than Wolong. Wolong was kind of, mm, I still need to finish it. And if you can tell if I don't, I'm not that enthusiastic about a game if I haven't finished the game. So, and, it, and the fact that this is an action game and I haven't finished it, mm, that doesn't really say a lot of positive things about the game. It's funny that The Last of Us has more re-releases than actual games. Exactly, see? That's what I'm talking about. Like, it's it's hard to see, like, a brand new IP come out of a well-established studio nowadays. 
The MGS3 remake is not coming until 2026. Uh, it's like, if we want to see a new franchise come out, it's like one will come out like every four to six years. And I guess GTA, G, technically the GTA games are sequels, so it's basically a franchise. But they put like so much money into the one game that you can expect that game to be relevant for like a decade. <laughs> Pretty much look at GT, GTA 5, right? So, anyway... Those are my thoughts on games for next year. Uh, I, I want to be surprised by some of these. But there's not a whole lot. I definitely think that 2024 is going to be a far more muted year in terms of game releases. I think that we won't see anywhere near the amount of volume of games like AAA games compared to this year. Uh, so we're going to be looking at Chinese developers to try to like close the gap on that and or MMO games like Dawn Trail, you know, from Final Fantasy, like these type of games to come out and basically pick up the slack because it's like, if there's no new games to play, then you're just going to go back to playing subscription based games or, or like old games or something or work on backlog. I mean, that's always an option too. Anyway, guys, that's pretty much going to be it for this stream. Rockstar's apparently doing a new IP with a... Yeah, but that's going to be so far out, considering their timeline. Alright, guys, that's going to be it for the stream. This is the last This Week in Tech of 2023. We'll be back next week with the first This Week in Tech of 2024. So stay tuned for the next one. And once again, thank you all for watching. And I will catch you guys next year. Take care. Yeah, have a happy new year.